Look, there's a lot of ways to work out, a lot of ways to exercise your body, but one of them is superior to all the others when it comes to making your body look the best. I'm talking about aesthetics, and that's strength training, lifting weights. No other form of exercise allows you to target sculpt your body like strength training. So if you do other forms of exercise, you may look better, you start to become healthier, but only strength training allows you to target parts of your body, develop them, and literally change the way you look. Get you I, that naughty body. Was, <laughs> what? what? Right, guys? Naughty people. <laughs> I just came up with that. Uh, wow. <laughs> well, please clip that, Andrew. No. Please clip that. Naughty body. <laughs> I, so, okay, when you were saying that, I was like, um, obviously, but I was like, who would who would disagree or not maybe even think that? But then I forgot there there's, uh, there's a lot of people that do like um, uh, Pilates, um, what else is another example of 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 somebody in a form of exercise that you do with the intent of sculpting the body or looking the way you you know what it, it, think about it, okay because a lot of people do stuff to lose weight yeah. right and that's mm. that's their main goal and you can lose weight doing lots of forms of different exercise well, well, the challenge is is that people look at like top yoga instructors or top Pilates instructors or dancers or swimmers or whatever on social media and they think oh that form of exercise is gonna make me look like that. That's not quite how it works. First off, when you're looking at the top uh, uh, or the best of the best in each of these categories, you, what you have is a combination of hard work, effort, discipline, right? They've been doing this for a long time, but also their bodies uh, genetically are great for that particular endeavor. So if you look at like the top, the world's top swimmers, you're gonna have a lot of people with long torsos, short legs, broad backs, kind of flat chest, right? Because that's a body type that tends to do well. And of course they train hard and they work hard, as well. Same thing with basketball players, football players, and so on. So it's not really a good way to determine how a form of exercise is going to make you look. Really, you want to look at what, how that form of exercise gets your body to adapt. And strength training, I don't, there's no other form of exercise that lets you target parts of your body. Like if you cycle, you're doing the same thing over and over again. You're working some parts and not others, right? If you run, if you do Pilates, you are working your body a particular way, but you're not like target building, target sculpting. With strength training, I can literally look in the mirror and say, I want rounder shoulders, I want better hamstrings, I want uh, you know, my lats to come out so my waist looks smaller, I want my arms to look a particular way, and then I can train those parts of my body. I can target sculpt and target train my body. So it's as close as you can get to being a sculptor. No other form of exercise lets you do that. So, I, you, so you think it's just they, they don't have a good understanding of even what they truly want? Or what'll happen, right? They, they, they don't necessarily know. They... Most people will look at, again, they'll look at a picture of someone who does something a lot and say, oh, that's what I could look like mm. if I did that thing. Or the other thing you see is they see somebody and go like, I don't want to look like that. And that's what those out. For example, yes. like I know some girls uh, st uh, stay away from like CrossFit type of training because they're afraid that they're going to have these boxy hips. And it's like, no, those top athletes that are women in the in crossfit are good at deadlifting and snatch and all that stuff the like boxy that hips help because it helps yeah. it helps the sport it's not the yeah. sport made their hips look that way and so mm. there's a lot of people that will avoid certain exercises or modalities because they look at the top yeah, the characteristics are, are you you'll start to recognize them you know in top tier sports because like some of those are advantages in terms of you're talking about the torso long torso like all these different types of you know, bodies that actually perform better for very specific tasks. So, you know, to, to attribute that to the training is, is, you know, something you got to check yourself on. Yeah. Um, there was this really cool picture I saw a long time ago where it had Michael Phelps, right? So he's like, he's the most decorated Olympian, I think of all time, definitely the best swimmer of all time. And they had his body and they had him standing next to, I think it was the world marathon champion, I think. And the marathon champion was short, shorter compared to Michael Phelps, much shorter, but their legs were the same length. So Michael Phelps was like way taller, but he's got really short legs, a really long torso, really long arms. Yeah. The marathon runner had these really long legs, short torso. Um, and it's, that's their genetics, right? And then their training, of course, uh, is also what makes them great, but that's not, that doesn't mean you're going to look like that. Mm. Right. Um, and again, strength training I, anybody, you can look in the mirror and say, I want more butt. I want more hamstrings. I want this. I want that. And then you can go to the gym and, and the beauty of strength well, training is there's body part specific. Well, exercises. one of the things that's so amazing yeah. about strength training too, is that you can, you can design having both, right? Like, so if you have somebody who like, 
gravitates towards Pilates or gravitates to getting in shape with a sport or yeah. what's cool or like loves to swim. Like what's cool about having the, the strength training as the foundation, like you can build your programming to build the, the absolute ideal physique for you that you want. And then uh, you can integrate these aspects of that way of training around it. it, yeah. it remi- I had this, co- I was just before we got on, I'm going to razz my buddy, Brendan. So, uh, you know, he, he's in, in incredible shape. He's a little bit older than we are. He's ex NFL pro. Yeah. Ex NFL. He has, he has, what was he? He was tested as one of those, the one, 1% gene or whatever yeah. that he has. Oh, yeah. Like, he's, yeah, just, he's, he's a on another level. <laughs> he's a beast. He's in incredible shape. And uh, he's always trying to get a little bit bigger and more muscular and stuff like that. And we were texting back and forth. And he was like, yo, you see, I'm 205 right now. He looks great. I'm like, yeah. I said, you know, if I could just get you to stop doing all the soccer mom exercises, imagine what you would look like. <laughs> <laughs> we won't tell anybody, dude. Yeah. Put him on maps. You know, no, I, I, I share that. I'm busting his balls. Yeah, Guys, it, yeah. he he could run a, I think he's running a mile, like five minutes something, dude. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's a just, super yeah, athlete. He's yeah, a, he's a badass, right? Um. And and I and, and you know he he was laughing and he sent me back a, a, a voicemail you know being like you know and basically rattling off his stats of how badass he is and all those things and I'm like I, I'm just I'm busting your chops, but one of the things that like I, I mean if he was my client one of the things I would I would get him to understand also is that I can give you all those things and still build a program around a, it around strength training so I know yeah. it's not either or it's not like. You, I'm going to make you get bigger and more muscular, and therefore you're not going to be able to run. You're not going to be able to do these things. You won't be athletic. I can still keep you athletic and and still have a, a strength training focused program and build more muscle or get you bigger than what you currently are right now. Like this, it's like this idea that you have to train all this crazy endurance stuff. Like if you want to be good at, at just the, uh, the athletic pursuits, it's like, no, we can program. A lot of like you know to be uh, versatile in in all directions, to be able to jump, to be able to run, to be able to get a good mile. Like you can go, you can acquire all those skills, and and then also strength training. But it's like the people that want those skills, they gravitate towards this programming that is just like the whole programming is all centered yeah, around yeah. just endurance, endurance, and endurance. Combo it all together. Well, yeah. Name one form of exercise that is more versatile than strength training. It literally, strength training can be used to complement any physical pursuit. You can't say that for any other form of exercise. Literally, I could take strength training and I can apply it. And the reason why we could do this, by the way, is because it's so moldable. There's, I don't know, 10,000 exercises. There's five different ways to do each one. There's ways I could strength train for explosive power, strength endurance, traditional strength, stability, correctional exercise. So literally, it doesn't matter what you do. You can add appropriate strength training. And the programming here is real important, right? Because you got to have the right programming. You can add appropriate strength training and it'll make what you do better. There's no other form of exercise yeah. that does this. It's it's literally in a category of its own when it comes to exercise and in, in, in training. In fact, it's the it's the primary way people mm-hmm. rehab their bodies, even. You go to a physical therapist, what they're doing with you are forms of strength training to rehab your body. And all the cognitive benefits as well, which uh, never gets highlighted in our industry, you know, in terms of like being able to keep your, your mind stimulated and all these like um, receptors and, and uh, being able to, um, you know, go through and, and, and teach your body all these new movements. It's basically its own language that you acquire as you get uh, more proficient, a lot of the different skill of, of weight training and you're, you're constantly stimulating it with information. So it, it keeps, it keeps your cognitive abilities sharp. Oh, it's uh, the, the proprioceptive. Uh, so proprioception is knowing where your body is in space because strength training is so multidimensional, um, so moldable, you know, right? If you do a sport or a form of exercise, it typically tends to have the same movement or movement patterns that are repetitive, right? So like running, right. cycling, swimming, tennis, basketball, football, whatever. It's like similar movements over and over again that are that sport. Well, because strength training is, it has form and technique, but it's also formless. Yeah, It's formless in the sense that I can do, I can move any plane, I can rotate, I can, yeah. It's you know. patterns, interruptions constantly, yes. which, you know, you get into that sort of, which people love cardio. And I understand why, because you can really get into that, that zone where you're, yeah. you're, you know, you're, you're lost. Like you're getting that endorphin experience out of it because it becomes mindless. And it's almost like a form of meditation for a lot of people when they are able to just, you know, get into that repetitive kind of rhythm uh, versus like 
strength training, like it's just constantly having to account for all this different types of stimulus. It's got to be the most commonly used form of exercise across the board for all sports. Like, can you name any other form of exercise that's used in almost every single sport aside besides strength training? No. I can't, mm -hmm. right? No. It's it's incorporated no. in golf, basketball, football, swimming. Like I don't I mean, whatever the sport is, strength training applied appropriately. Well, and that's I mean, that's relatively new when you think about it. We have yeah, we, that was not always the case. Yeah. I mean I mean that's a that's when you look at some of the things that have attributed you remember there was a there was a TED talk we shared a long time ago on, on the show, way back when. I forgot the name of it, but it talked about all these crazy leaps. The democratization of sports. Yeah, yeah, it was something like that. I think that was the name of it, in fact. Oh, you think that was I the name so, of the TED yeah. Talk? Maybe Doug can look it up and see if he can find it. Uh, I, you remember which one I'm talking about, right? I you do, know, and he was talking about uh, performance improvements over the years, and and he was showing that it had more to do with like the track and the equipment. Yeah, and, yeah. and then science with nutrition. And yeah. I mean, we, we've we just... Like, they humans, think people think it's steroids. Yeah, human, yeah, exactly. The, the, what blew my mind about that, that was the point I was making, was that like, I, if you would have asked me, you know, athletes today versus athletes 40 years ago, and we look at all all the numbers, we're blowing everything out of the way, what would you attribute the most to? I'm like, oh, performance enhancement drugs, for sure. Yeah. Right. David Epstein. We actually had him on the show, I believe. We did. Yeah, mm -hmm. we did. Mm -hmm. Did and we have? What's, yeah, and what's the name of the... Uh, the, the are athletes really getting faster, better, stronger? Did yeah. we have them on the show? We did. Yeah. No way. Uh -huh. I don't even a remember. A long time ago. Wow. It was like, that must have been year two. Yeah. It was a long time Wow. Time you know, that would be an interview I'd rather do now, like when we're better. I, I know. Because that's a, he would be an interesting conversation. I don't remember What's the What's your favorite color? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, Doug, we, write down some we, questions. We, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're probably asking some bad shit. I don't know. <laughs> but that, I, think, I think that's just such, like so pizza? interesting because I, I mean- at least my buddies and I who all like argue and debate sports stuff all the time. That was a big argument for the longest time of like, what is, what has made the biggest difference. And we've just, we've come all, uh, humans are exactly the same as what they were 40 years yeah. ago. And as their, their abilities were pretty similar. In fact, there's some examples of some older athletes that did some even more impressive things than today. Yeah. So it's not, it's not that we've evolved. It's that we've gotten much smarter with our approach and strength training and recovery are the two I would say, have really evolved the most with with athletes. I mean, that was just not. You have athletes now like the LeBron James and many other of these top athletes. That people spend don't realize a million it. dollars a year yes. on recovery, and, and people training. don't realize this up until the eighties. Up until the eighties, I'll say, except for football. Even football, though, if you go if you go earlier than the eighties, like seventies, sixties, up until the eighties, athletes were encouraged not to strength train. Yeah. They were actually told, "Don't go to the gym." and lift weights because it makes you muscle bound. It'll reduce your performance, your athletic performance. This is still a big thing, and even in baseball that really? we were fighting. Oh, yeah. I mean, when I was helping out the high school team, it was like we were constantly battling with the, the high school baseball coach. Oh, that's so because, funny. Because, yeah, it's like, don't do any of the upper body stuff, you know? And, uh, it's like, <laughs> like, like, what? Like, Anyways, what yeah, kind of dinosaur so coaches? Were yeah, I was like, where? <laughs> well, we also, you crawl well, we also went on this, it's, you know, it's kind of like, Okay, we weren't doing it at all, and then we recognized the the benefits of it, and then there was a, the over application of or it. We're just doing it wrong. So I think when yeah. you hear a coach that's like that seems like they're dinosaur ages, they were part of the the wave who probably adopted it, well, but adopted it incorrectly, yeah, and then saw negative effects from it. Exactly. And they're like, "Don't do that." You yeah, know, what like I'm saying? didn't do any of the skill in conjunction with right the or training. over over yeah. training, or it was just bodybuilding. Yeah, exactly. Like, to yeah, them, they, they did had, the like, bodybuilding. Yeah, they're like, "You're just going to bodybuild." And yeah. It's like, no, there's specific. Again, it's so moldable. It has to be done appropriately. But when you apply, because all strength training is, is adding resistance to movement in the attempt to gain strength. Okay, and the, and and also possibly muscle, depending on on your sport. That's all it is. So it can be bands, it could be body weight, it could be you know uh, weights, of course, and machines. It could be lots of different ways that you could do this. You could do strength training to some extent just by explosive movement without any resistance at all. But if you apply it properly, um, there's nothing more versatile that'll make you better at uh, at everything. So yeah. and and then as far as making you look good. I mean, you, in terms of aesthetics, okay, forget athletic performance and movement and all that stuff, just in terms of aesthetics. Oh my God. Like you can't. Nothing comes close. There's nothing comes close. Nothing comes close. No. no. Male, female, I don't care who you are, what your goal is. You take your twin and they do any other form of exercise and you give me the that other was twin your and I do. opportunity, man, to just be, look at this. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> 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 
Well, but there's really no, there's really no, years. there's no other form that so many you would make that case anymore, right? I, I brought up Pilates and not to rag on Pilates at all, but that's one of those ones that I still hear. Like I have people that I've talked to that are like, um, oh, you know, I love the way it makes my body look. And I'm just like, yeah, that's, if you think that makes your body look really yeah. good, imagine if you actually strength train because you could really sculpt the totally. body. So it's yeah. not that it doesn't at all is that there is a, which is just like the, the point I was making about my buddy is like, it's not like what he's doing isn't not working athletic performance. The proof is in the pudding. He's in incredible athletic shape. It's just like, I could give you what I know you want. You want to be a little bit more jacked and more size to you, but still be that super athletic guy as he ages. Like I have the answers for you. Yeah, it'll you, take one, <laughs> it'll take literally one day of me. Just one, yeah, one day of, of Yeah, I just of need, I just need to adjust a little bit of your, your strength training and the, and the way it's programmed. That's all right now. Right. This, this circuit style of training is obviously benefiting kind of where you're at right now, but we could get, a little bit more of that size. He's got such mesomorphic like. genetics too that that guy. Oh yeah, he could be a distance runner and he'd be built like he just the guy just muscular. Oh, yeah. yeah, no, no he's a, that's why I'm like, I, and I told him I said I'm just you know I'm just messing with you, but the trainer and me would love to get a hold of them genetics for a little bit. Oh, <laughs> just dude. let me let me get a hold of that programming for like six months and show you. It's so I, frustrating yeah. when you know regular like a regular guy like me meets somebody like that with those kind of. I mean, I've had people like that work for me, yeah. not very many. Yeah, the ones that like go to McDonald's and they're just like shredded. Dude, like, I, I've like had constantly. I've had trainers work for me, and I'm just like, wow, dude, he's so crazy jacked. And I'd watch him, and I'd be like, he eats pop tarts and cheeseburgers, and he works out once a week. Like, yeah. what the heck is going on here? I'm over here busting my butt to try to look. You know, do you think good. do you think those same people, um, or do you think this is a different gene that allows you to even get away with, let's say, uh, um you know, less appropriate training for what you're trying to obtain. Do you understand what I'm saying? So yeah, like, I think if do you, you think ask, that, you think that's the same kind of gene yeah. or do you think it's different? You think there's like a, a gene for people that are just, man, they are just blessed. They touch weights, they build muscle or whatever. And is that same gene responsible for the people too? Who like they could also train terribly, not yeah. eat. Okay. Yeah. So you, when you, you have those muscle building genetics that are on that 1% that just extreme, respond get away. I mean, you ever look at pictures more, of yeah. like, uh, like Phil Heath, right? He was Mr. Olympia for a while when he played basketball. His arms look like he, mine. He was a monster, yeah, when he was young. <laughs> yeah, this, was, is, this, is also, this is also what makes it very difficult for people to point to a person as an example of what they're doing and how it's worked for yeah. them because there's such a large individual variance on how you respond. I mean, we talked about how bodybuilders need very little calories. There's people who can get, which is also why you hear people be like, you don't have to eat that much protein. It, I only eat this much and look at my, like there's some people that uh, probably assimilate protein, need less of a requirement than other people do to build muscle too. So just because we have these, these general truths in nutrition of like, oh, this is the best ratio that, remember, this is a, a collection of people over a study yeah. that are all individual. This is what they come out to be, the average or median, and therefore that's what we put out as the science. But the truth is there's, there's, there's two ends of the spectrum and then everybody in between. And if you get somebody who is an incredible responder that needs very little of this, the very little of the protein, need very little of the additional calories, but and just need to touch the weights, doesn't even have to be good programming, and they respond. And then you have the other person who has to do almost everything perfect, and then they barely see any mm -hmm. any response from it. And then everybody in between and recognize that you're somewhere and you fit somewhere in that spectrum. And the person that you're using as an example. That's not fair, yeah. Yeah, it could be so different on on yeah. the spectrum. Yeah, than like you are. there's some people like Herschel Walker. You guys ever see this guy yeah, 50 yeah, something yeah. years old? Like what is going on? Oh, Ronnie Coleman. Ronnie Coleman was top 10 Mr. Olympia, pro bodybuilder, natural, natural. Then the story goes, and this was corroborate. This is, I mean, this him is- Him and Flex, right? Flex is Flex, the one introduced to him. Flex Wheeler, and Flex tells a story, and so does Ronnie Coleman. Flex Wheeler's like, hey, man, if you just did some steroids, like you would totally win. <laughs> that next year, he showed up on stage, <laughs> and everybody was like, "This, the, who is this what? mutant? And he won, you know, and then won seven times in a row, whatever. Yeah. So those genetics are out there. Unfortunately, most of us don't have them. That's the shoe <laughs> for it. What's up, everybody? Today's giveaway, MAPS Aesthetic. This is a bodybuilder workout program. Here's how you can enter to win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comments and you got free access to MAPS Aesthetic. Also, we got a sale going on this month. Three programs, 50% off. MAPS Performance, MAPS Aesthetic, and MAPS Hit. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. Speaking of, of strength training, do? 
Dr. Andy Galpin posts this this study that people were getting kind of confused about and excited about. So, um, and you guys saw this. You sent it to me, right? I did. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to pull it up and read kind of the title of it because people were like, oh my God, this is crazy. It says, males do not gain muscle and strength, uh, muscle strength and size with the resistance training faster than women. In fact, females often see faster progress in upper body strength development. So this is a sex differences in resistance training, a systematic review and meta analysis. This was a great study. Now people were like kind of confused by this. Like, wait a minute, like women build more muscle or like what's going on. No, so I kind of wanted to explain not, this because I read it. I'm sure this is going to make its rounds. So it's, it's, it's relative size and strength to their current size. So mm -hmm. because women are smaller and men are much larger relative to their size. They will gain. They will gain. Uh, excuse me. Gain a greater percentage of muscle in a particular period of time than a man will. This is also true for a smaller man versus a larger man. So, if you're small, for example, if you have ten pounds of lean body mass, you gain one pound. You gain ten percent more lean body mass. If you have a hundred pounds of lean body mass and you gain, you know, five pounds, it's five times as much muscle, but it's less. Right. It's a much smaller percentage. Yeah. So that's the reason why, because people were confused about this and. So women do gain great muscle and strength. They just, as, as a percentage. Is this of, also of, kind of a selection thing in terms of women pr preferring more lower body centric workouts and, you know, maybe highlighting development? Of, oh, I'd, Im I'd imagine that was versus in the controls. Because then if, yeah, if yeah. they were to focus a bit more, because, you know, that being a novel stimulus is, is it's, being it's, provided. It's, it's a meta analysis. Yeah, there's a lot. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot. There's no way. There's got to be some of those controls in there yeah. also. That would be silly because you're right because they would gravitate towards one. I mean, I think what the, the most interesting about the study that it highlights more than anything else is that the potential for women is is equally there. Yeah. I think that's the, the real takeaway from this is that, you know, a lot of women sometimes can be discouraged that you're going to see results that they can't yeah. build muscle or it's so difficult for them or they've been told. So, so we get all the testosterone. So we build, muscle you know what the biggest, don't. you know what the biggest channel first? Yes. Of course, men can build much more total muscle. They start out with more muscle, of course, but here's the biggest challenges for women traditionally, or generally speaking, when it comes to building muscle one, they're typically more apprehensive at consuming the right amount of calories and protein to build muscle. Whereas guys tend to be more, uh, they're, they're more ready to do so, or, or they try to, cause they're trying to gain. Whereas women are a little bit more apprehensive. So they tend to consume too little and they're also not as ready to lift heavy. Right. And so those two fat, those two things play a huge role. When I, women eat the protein, eat the calories, lift heavy. I mean, you see phenomenal. I wonder if, I wonder generally speaking too, uh, would you say that women are challenged more often hormonally than men are too? Meaning, that when you if you just took a hundred random men off the street, a hundred random women off the street, do you think there'd be a greater percentage of women in there that have imbalanced hormones or issues Ooh. with their hormones compared to men? And even the men that have issues with it still have testosterone and and beneficial muscle building so hormones. There's two, there's two mm. things to that. One is that um, that men across the board for the last, I think, six decades have been seeing a lowering of testosterone. Correct. So men are actually seeing some pretty gnarly things when it comes to uh, testosterone. Now, on the other side, women's hormone levels seem to be more sensitive to things like stress, lack of sleep, and low calorie. things like fasting. Yeah, yeah I would say fasting. low calorie. Yeah, be careful. Be yeah, because a, a woman's body, obviously they evolved to, to be able to carry a, a baby. And so when they feel, when their body senses too much stress or overwork, it's go, let's become infertile. We can't support a baby. So I've had female clients, for example, go fast, do fasting. And then over time we start to get these stress effects like hair loss and like they have too much cortisol, you know, they're storing body fat weird. And that's like, we can't fast anymore. Whereas men tend to respond better to the stress. Of you fasting. get where I'm going with that I question do. though, right? Yeah. Like, because- I, mean, I think birth control plays a role too. Right. Women so, are, are, are right. Are so that's, that was my point. Hundred off random off street. And, and this is a thing that this is the problem with studies like this, right? Because there's probably a lot of women that are reading that and be like, man, that cannot be true. I don't feel that way. And they're probably right because they probably fall into more of a more general or average if you were to select people randomly and not control them for a study and go, okay, let's get a hundred women who have good balance or good and balanced, healthy hormonally. And let's put them in this study and let's do the same for men. And then, Oh, look at that. When yeah. everything's all equated for, they actually can build muscle just as easily as men. But the truth is 
that's not the average woman potentially, right? Mm -hmm. I'm saying, is there a potential that when you would grab hand, a random 100 off the street that there would be a greater percentage and how much greater of a percentage would that group of 100 women that you pulled in 100 men well, pull that would have in, uh, hormonal imbalances, yeah, which know. play a huge factor yeah. in the ability to build muscle and lose body fat. I think, yeah, I think you're making a point with that. I think too, based off of the episode we did about like why women should bulk and what kind of response we got from oh, that. It's like, you know, how often is that uh, a conversation or something that women are actively seeking is to, you know, go higher in their calorie yep. intake. The it's typical, very... the typical under eater chronic dieter is a female. Yeah. You typically don't see that. You're not going to build not... well in that state. Yeah. So when a woman's like, I'm going to lift weights, her goal is usually to lose weight. And so she's afraid of eating or fueling her body appropriately to build the muscle. Whereas a guy, even if he wants to lose weight, you know, he's, he's you know like, where well, you see wanna... that in men, where you see that in men is when men have lost a bunch of weight because they were really overweight. Yeah. Then, yeah, they have the fear. Then they become yeah. chronic under eaters, right? Yeah. So if you've met somebody That's true. who had to lose 50 to 100 pounds and they actually finally did it, right? For whatever means they yeah. did it, whether it was properly or improperly, more often than not, it's improperly where they cut mm -hmm. hardcore calories and they do lots of cardio. And then they are become chronic under eaters because in fear of going the other direction. Yeah. So they're constantly keeping themselves in this crazy deficit. You know, I'd love you guys' uh, input on this. In my experience, the, with the average man and average, so average male, average female client within a year, and I say average, so they're probably working out two to three days a week, you know, um, in the gym consistently. Um, they're not like perfect about their diet, but they're eating better. So these are people I've worked with, okay? The average woman, I could get to build about six to seven pounds of lean body mass in a year. And the average male, usually around 10 to 13 pounds of lean body mass in the first year. Would you guys say that that's Similar. These I mean, are I th average people. I mean, I think that's a that's a a, a pretty fair. Yeah, and, and it, it does. But here's, I don't. Generally speaking, yeah, I would probably. Man, say I can't. I can't. When you would track them and all that. Yeah, I can't. I, I couldn't. To be honest with you, it's crazy. It's been so long now, and it's been and there were mm -hmm. so many people that it would that number sounds fair enough that it's not like it definitely wasn't something crazy. Yeah, it definitely yeah. wasn't no twenty pounds they were putting no. on there, and but I mean. When you look at like your client base, especially if you include the, the first half of our career, I mean, over the course of a year, a lot of my clients didn't see a lot of results. Just oh, to be yeah. honest, I'm I talking mean, about the back half of when you were. You yeah, were I mean, I mean, the <laughs> I'm not looking at the, the back nine. Trade in the beginning. I mean, I mean, Sorry. The, the truth is, I mean, it's this. Uh, even if you're a good trainer, right? Which I would consider myself the back half of my career. The adherence to uh, to consistent uh, consistency in diet and training is so so rare that's that, hard. that when yeah. you know so it's it's actually hard to remember what that looks like if i were to bring an average out i'd say it would be incredibly low and bad because the average is is you know, there's so many more people that i guess the median you're right because the average would count yeah. like a lot of the people that yeah would, uh, yeah yeah yeah. Know, yeah that's depressing thanks for bringing it to the depression it's, it, it, well <laughs> like, yeah i mean okay, you're we right good. though like it, it, so it this was, is what i don't know about you guys i mean you guys actually train very clients. rare we get those transformations that were powerful you know you guys have probably actually trained more clients than I have um, directly, right? Uh, indirectly, if you count my years as a, as a fitness manager, indirectly, I had, you know, hundreds, thousands uh, underneath me through all these trainers, but you guys probably train more one-on-one -on -one people. I pretty quickly, I was over it. <laughs> and it would, part of that was that it's the same reason why when, when on the business side, when people ask me why we don't do mm -hmm. the, the mastermind group thing, also because it's like low hanging fruit shit. It's like, you know what I, I have a really hard time with and I don't know. I don't know what this is. I don't, I'd like to say it's my integrity. I don't even know if that's true or not, though. Is that I have a hard time selling ideas to people when I know what the the failure rate is. It's and I, you just got to be honest. I'm I mean, I'm, I'm challenging. You know, you saying that though too. That I 100. percent That was always in the back of my mind. Is like, I'm not breaking through. I'm not breaking through. Yeah. And this is why I reduced my clientele down to like a few. Yeah. And the, the higher end model because I just felt like I wasn't doing everything I could. I, I just yeah. changed my expectations. I I started to look at all the other ways that I was helping these people. They're showing up. They're happier. They feel better. Yeah, they haven't lost any weight yet because that's tough and it's hard for them to change their diet. And then I was honest. I would tell people when they'd hire me, I know you want to lose 30 pounds. It's going to take a long time. Some people never do it, you yeah. know, but here's what we're going to do. And so I would be very honest. And then if they did lose it, it was like this great surprise. So I, I pivot to coaching trainers do it. <laughs> so I, <laughs> you know, so I pivoted over to like, like I'll, I'll teach them how to do all this. You stuff, but do I, it. I don't want to, this, this is what I tell But people. I mean, this is why, I mean, I love this, right? This is what, what I love about this is that it's like, 
I, we can we can just continue to give all the the information and experience and knowledge that we've acquired over all these years, and there's no expectations attached to it for me, which yeah. I love. I yeah. love that. I love this like. I'm just going to give you everything I know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so with that, and then you go do go with it as you, it. you yeah. go do with it as you please. I don't have to please. handhold yeah. you through the Yeah, application. I'm not hired. I'm not being paid to make sure you're you're accountable to all of it. I just, here you go. You go do what it's, you want with it. Isn't that funny and it's more effective? It's yeah. way more fulfilling too because yeah. then I, we get all these like, you know, live callers that come on and it's like, oh my God. And then I'm like, oh, it feels so good. This is why, <laughs> I mean, it's this is, this is why I have so much respect for coaches and trainers. It's like, yeah. I can't think of another job where if you have a 50% fail rate, you're crushing. Like if you're a trainer. Baseball. And half, that's oh, it. Yeah, that's right. 300, yeah, yeah. that's, yeah, that's even worse. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. If, you're, if you're a trainer and yeah, half of your clients eventually develop long-term success, you are crushing it. You're like the most successful, like one of the most successful trainers in the world. That's how tough. That, I mean, that's a, that's my that's my appreciation. Yeah. That means half for, of your people for the sport the of baseball. It's one of the things that makes it so unique. I guess you could say basketball there, but basketball it's even a higher shooting percentage. Uh, it would be considered really good. Um, yeah, baseball. If you're batting 300, you're a killer. Like yeah. imagine, imagine what a, when you think about that. What a what a what a tough yeah. mental sport. Like it doesn't get enough credit for the mental game yeah. Yeah. that it has. It's like, like you are going to get to the plate and you're going to fail most of the time seven suck. times <laughs> out of ten if you're lucky. Most of the time, you'll probably fail eight times. Like that's you know, like that takes a lot of well, of, I would, of mental I, discipline. I would even argue training's harder because you're dealing with people. So you're not striking out. It's like, oh, sorry, Miss Johnson. I know yeah, you're, yeah, no, money, other, <laughs> you're not just dealing with your own emotions. You're dealing with their emotions yeah, too. Right? That's so. why I tell trainers. I say, you know, number rule number one, it's all your fault. Rule number two, don't own any of it. Like you got to do both <laughs> if you're going to be successful at this. You know, yeah, really yeah. tough. Anyway, I want to tell you guys about uh, the. We are here in the future. <laughs> I just read something the other day. The future is here. That's what set me. Doug, here. can you look up that protein for me? Uh, I heard hmm. about this. So yesterday I did hmm. our meeting with our um, some of our staff. And I tell, I tell our team, if you guys ever come across something that you think would be interesting to bring up on the show, a topic idea or whatever, let me know. Oh, this came from them? Yes, came from them. Oh, I love I th that. I think it was... Uh, was Margaret? It, I think it was, it was either Rob or Margaret that brought this up. This no sponsorship or anything like this. I'm not advocating for the company. I don't know if it's a good product. I just thought this was crazy. Vegan whey protein. <laughs> is that possible? Okay. When, 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 like, what is the definition? When they of what? said that, I was like, wait, how is that possible? They say it's <laughs> animal free, not vegan. Animal. Okay, so it's animal free. So it's animal free well, whey not, protein. Wait, wait, wait. So you can call I know. I know. This is very confusing. Yes. It's whey. It's animal free. Yeah. And it's not vegan. They they literally make it. Doug, if you scroll down, they tell you how you make. I'm yeah, saying yeah. from strawberries. It smells like no, animals. No, it'll tell you it the steps very... right there. How we do it? Read that right there, Doug. Where the, where the molecules are. Yes. Yeah, so bacteria. what they do is they take microflora that are given with an exact copy of DNA corresponding to cow's milk protein. In fermentation tanks, the flora grazes on flora food and converts in it into animal-free milk protein. In the final step, the flora is filtered out, leaving pure animal-free whey protein that is identical to the protein found in cow's milk. Is it, wait, is it, so do they take the bacteria <laughs> from the animal? This. No. They take the bacteria. Milk. No, what? they take bacteria. Yeah, but where and they, they modify the, ba the bacteria. What bacteria? I thought where they, they get, get the no. Did, did I, okay, this is confusing to me. No, they modify the bacteria. But they did. But they get the bacteria originally from cow's milk. Is no. that, did I re hear you that correctly? No. no? Did, that's what it what sounded I'm like trying you said. To construct. No. <clears throat> yeah, it's exact copy of the DNA. So they take bacteria. Okay, so they're it's through CRISPR so technology they, like, or whatever. Oh, okay, so they're cloning basically cow's milk. No. What? No, no, cloning, cloning. Okay, no, I don't think cloning okay, would be the right so, term. Okay, well, but you know, what, okay, copying. Yeah, yes. copy. They're, okay, they copy it. You, you still the need Xerox the animal it. milk though for them to no for the nineties. kids. Nope. You, you don't need anything. Cows could disappear off the face of the earth, and they'll be able to make whey protein. So they take bacteria, they insert DNA into it to to make the bacteria create the oh. amino acids, the protein. So it basically changes the yes. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and now you have whey protein. Well, isn't that pretty much what a isn't that what a probiotic does to our guts? It goes in and it actually does it modify the bacteria or does it just populate new healthy no, bacteria? No, 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 no. This is totally different. This is like um, what's our company that we work with? Uh, Seed. No, for for alcohol. Oh, Zbiotics. Zbiotics. 
Z-biotics is bacteria that's been modified. Right. right. This is bacteria that's been modified. So now it produces whey protein. Hey, does, <laughs> does it not look exactly Weird. like they hired Magic Spoon's company to do their- yeah, to Absolutely. Their, uh, it looks exactly the same. It, it looks so much like Magic Spoon. Now, so if you're a vegan, right? Now, like real- Okay. I I'm bet not you they say, know who they are. I'm not going to say real vegans. Vegans, and I did say real it, or fake. Vegans who are consistent, who stay vegans for life, if you look at the data, are people who actually believe in the betterment of animals and the welfare of animals. This is why they do it. Yeah. People who become vegan because they think it's healthier, they have a fail rate like any diet. So vegans who care about animals, don't want to harm any animals, there's protein now that they can have whey protein. What is well, the, there you how go. crazy is that? What's yeah. the psychology around why some people are attracted to become activists? To become activists? Yeah. Do you know? They need purpose, probably. That's You're just I'm guessing? Guess, I'm guessing. Can you search that for me? <laughs> why do, be, why mean, do people become activists? Yeah, I mean, there's got to be a psychological thing that, that causes you to want, to all of a sudden feel this desire or need. When to, we saw- George, I, I, You know what's striking it for me, right? Or right. What's, what's prompting this right now for me? I watched the um, Pamela Anderson documentary last night. So well, what does it have to do with know, I'm she, to see where Well, after everything went really bad for her when that when that that video was stolen, they went viral, like it totally flipped her life upside down. And like they so really, really it's kind of a sad story when you see kind of mm -hmm. her her rise and fall. And one of the things that like uh reinvigorated her career or her like purpose or whatever was she decided to use her character that they were basically kind of mocking and stuff like that to become an activist for PETA. And up until that point, she was like not vegan, none of those uh, things like that. And she read something or did something that made sounds her- Sounds to me like she needed a sense of purpose and meaning. Or yeah, like, well, mm -hmm. that's why I'm, I'm I'm prompted to ask this question because it, it, it I thought about it. I was like, that's really interesting, right? Like this is not a person who like her whole life was like- When we went to watch- Thought Jordan about like saving animals' lives, something like that. There's just yeah. something happened in her life- and then it triggered her to become this activist. And then there's some sort of probably a feedback loop that's happening psychologically for them to like, oh, wow, when I did this, this felt really good. And so I'm going to do more of it and keep going. Like, I'm sure, yeah, there's some instances of trauma or things too that might, you know, spark them to, to, to want to make a change or a difference. You like, got anything for me, Doug? Yeah. So it says those who find personal meaning in current events are inclined to speak out for a cause. Uh, individuals are more likely to feel a personal connection if they see themselves as part of a community affected uh, by an issue. Um, so, see, so that makes sense, right? She's been ostracized by most people so that she found a community that would adopt her and bring her in. Mm. They love her because she's already got leverage and power because of her name. And so it becomes this she's beautiful- struggling. So how she, she's got a sense of purpose. Now, Jordan Peterson talked about this when we watched him talk. He talked yeah. about how- movements have religious undertones. Now, the ones that tend to be parasitic is are the ones that don't have the complete story, right. that don't paint the good and the bad. They just show the bad or whatever, and then it's unbalanced. But, I mean, that's, that's what it is. All right, uh, more cool science stuff. I've been reading about fat loss and cannabinoids. Did you guys know that people that use cannabinoids on a regular basis, this is cool, Every time you say cannabinoids, I can't help but think of avoid the noid. Oh, that's uh, old school, that? man. I that's hate a, when I dominoes. I mess dominoes, it up every yeah. time I do it. Dom dominoes, Domino's Pizza. God, they're, they're going to bring them back. You guys know that? No, they're not. They, they did. They, had they a, brought them back to they brought, they brought them back like a year ago or whatever. Did I miss that? Yeah, you I thought did. you talked about it. In fact, it. I think we brought it up on the podcast. <sighs> I think we I did. Uh, did you forget your, your yeah, neutral? This was pre peptides. Can we come up with like an acronym like BCAD? You know what I'm saying? For Justin, like pre. P. Yeah, no, it's JP. Just, just in pre, yeah. JPP, yeah, so, just in pre-peptides. Are you seeing this now in supplements? Is that well, no. This well, up? well, so check this out. This and so this is at risk of selling, you know, cannabinoids as fat loss. So let's let's not. We're not going to go there. But it is interesting that people that utilize cannabinoids on a regular basis <laughs> tend to consume more calories. Okay, well that's not surprising. They they tend to stimulate appetite, right? But they're also leaner. They have lower BMIs. So this is like this. It's like and and this is well studied. So I looked it up and I've seen all these studies on it. And it's like this paradox. People use a lot of cannabinoids, consume more calories, and yet have lower BMI. The theory is that the cannabinoid, the CB1 receptor, so this is what a receptor that cannabinoids attach to, cannabinoids, uh, CBD doesn't attach to the cannabinoid receptors, but it definitely modulates them. THC, obviously, and you know, there's a, a plethora of cannabinoids in the hemp plant that activate the CB1 and CBT receptors. The CB1 receptor plays a role in energy metabolism in the body. So they think mm. speeding up the metabolism. So cannabinoids speed up the metabolism. Wow. Or yeah. 
or right. they don't control for how high these people are. They and thought they, they ate? Yeah, they thought they <laughs> ate. They really didn't eat. <laughs> Wow, you well, I actually time. forgot to get like, grocery shopping. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I had a whole pizza. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I did. I'm mm. going to report that. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. So anyway, we work with a company called Ned that has full spectrum <laughs> amp oil extracts. <laughs> Not saying it helps you burn body fat, <laughs> yeah. but look up the studies. Great it's commercial. Weird. I, I like that It one. is kind of uh, weird uh, when I you look like, at that. You know what I'm really interested in? We, we have a, when does um, the Chris Williamson uh, episode go? Doug? Yeah, so this one goes out on, t uh, I think, tomorrow. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Oh, oh, awesome. Cool. So this will be cool. I, I'm really fascinated by that. Uh, what's it called? The 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 region beta paradox yeah. that he talked about. Yep. Yeah. I think that's a, a really uh, interesting conversation that I, I've never really heard anyone talk about before so that the way he explains many it. people get trapped in. Totally. So the way he explains it, he, tells such a, he uses such a good analogy. He says, imagine that there's something that's a mile away. So it's, it's, like, it's close enough to walk. So you walk a mile to your destination and let's say that takes you 30 minutes to get there. But now imagine that that same destination is two miles away. So you're like, ah, eh, too far to walk, let me get in the car. So now you drive there and it only takes you seven minutes. So the paradox is you get somewhere faster that's further because you're using a car. And the examples he gives are like, you're in a relationship, it's not great, but it's not so bad that it forces you to leave. So you stick around. Right. But if it just got worse, You'd leave and then turn your life around and get into a better relationship. Yeah, so yeah. it's called the region beta paradox. And I think a lot. Of, I think a lot. I mean, I can can uh, remember a time in my life. I think I've mentioned it before on the show when the the time in my life before I left twenty four hour fitness, I would say there was a good three to four years I was stuck in that paradox. I was I was uh, content. With the amount of money I made, I liked what I did. I liked being in the gym. Like you, you all remember what yeah. that that, mm -hmm. that environment's like. It's, it was it was a fun work environment, but deep down in in the back of my mind, I knew I wanted more. I knew I wanted wow. to do much more, um, but I was content enough. I didn't. There wasn't enough to shake me up. And to be honest, I, I'm very grateful for the the stuff that had happened right before I left because it was enough to kind of rattle me. And, and, Did and, something happen right before? Yeah, so it was in, in combination. So like I had a, and it probably took this, both these things happening. We had uh, like the seventh comp plan change since I had worked there, right? By so, the yeah. way, comp plan change is code for, we're going to pay you less. Yeah, yeah we're, <laughs> we're taking money out of your paycheck. That's right. Well, and here's the thing that what I, I will give 24 Hour Fitness their flowers for is they- they actually, every time they changed the comp plan up until this point, they still left the door open for the, the the top, top performer to still go out and get his money. Right. Right. There was just, they made me work harder. Right. And I had to go do some other things, but it was still the opportunity was there. Like they made it they, and and what they were what they were continuing to do is just like, all right, if we're gonna keep paying these people this kind of money, they're gonna have to do this, this, and yeah. this. You know, oh we can't do this and this. What eventually happened and what was really the 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 straw that broke the camel's back with me was they put a ceiling. It didn't matter yeah. how much I did or how much I sold or how well over goal. They capped my, it? They capped it. Oh. They put a cap. To a guy like you, and, that would have killed me too. Yeah, I mean, it's, you're, 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 it's like taking a limb from me or something. You know what I'm saying? Like I, didn't, I was no longer fully complete anymore. So I was already there. And then I get somebody offering me more money than I've ever made in my life to go and pursue this medical marijuana field. That I knew nothing about. <laughs> I knew nothing about. But you didn't even smoke weed at this time. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. In fact, I was kind of an anti weed guy for sure. Uh, so, but, I hey, hold on. Did you tell? I, I never asked you this. Did you tell the people at Twenty Four Fitness what you were going to do? I did not only tell them, but the first cannabis club we opened it was, was right down the street, across the street. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that, you know those medicals right there in yeah. Santa Teresa, the across the yeah, parking yeah. lot. That was our first club. Oh yeah. my! Were they like? So I used to, I used to go back and forth. Like, hey, I'm leaving fitness. I'm gonna go sell weed. Yeah, I, well, I you know what happened? If I, if I ever told you this story, when we were, this is remember, I was completely green to like weed, like it. So I'm still like easing my way into trying it and how I feel. And I was at the, I was getting, we were just starting to build the store up. People, vendors were coming in and dropping off samples for us to try and stuff like that. And I am running this club. So I'm going to try these things so I can communicate about them. I'm learning all about them. And so I would try all these different strains. This guy comes in one morning with these teas and coffees and hot chocolates, all these prepackaged stuff. And, uh, and tells me the dosage that's in there and stuff like that. And I said, listen, I'm really sensitive to this stuff. 
um, you know, is this a high dose, low dose? Oh, no, no, this, it's very, very mild. You probably won't even feel it. Maybe a little bit if you had like this one or that one or what that. So I decide to try it. And at noon, I had to go back and do a talk at 24 Hour Fitness. <laughs> and I got so fucking high. It was one of the worst experiences of my life. You still did the talk? Yeah. I, I can't tell you. I have no idea what I said. And nobody was the wiser. <laughs> But it was so like inside the anxiety it was that was the best sweat. Oh, eyes oh, bro, my my uh, drips of sweat off my palms. I was so like nervous <laughs> and and it felt like it was the longest talk of my life. And I thought I rambled and mumbled and just <laughs> what a terrible oh, it was experience. Aw- it was up there with like one of the most uh, you know awful experiences that I ever went through. But yeah, I was so yeah, I was I was going back. But if it wasn't for the the combination of someone offering a ridiculous amount of money and I just recently got that news. Also, actually, we had a, a new GM came in, mm-hmm. so I was working with this this girl that was relatively new to the company. We adopted her from um, Circuit City when they oh, did that God. whole merge. Mm-hmm. So I now have a, a partner. Like so, at the gyms, GM, FM, and OM were like partners. Right? It was like the yeah. three of us ran a club together. And I always got along with my GMs and stuff like that. They, they, we, and here I get this person who's an outsider because they come from another company. And like maybe in Circuit City, she was really good. She just didn't know shit about fitness. And then like she was trying to micromanage me, and like, and because she wasn't in, she didn't. She and you're didn't not. Any, and you're, you're not exactly the most political yeah. <laughs> communicator, oh, man. And yeah, you know, I had a reputation in the space if you've been there for long enough. So I got the respect from my peers. But if you didn't know who I was, who she, so she didn't. So she comes in like all authoritarian, oh. not knowing her shit. Yeah. So like, it took all of that to finally rock my world. And then of course, I look back now it was one of the best decisions I ever made in my life, although scary. And difficult, not necessarily like necessary. I could have stayed there. So, I mean, how many people get trapped in this place physically, you know, emotionally, uh-huh. in relationships, totally. in work? Well, I immediately think of all the cubicles out there. Yeah. Like what, what a, it's that comfortably numb as they call it, right? Like you just get in, you check in, you do the nine to five, you go home and it's just like, you're getting paid just enough to keep going, but you're just not really motivated to look for another job. Cause this is the safe thing. Yeah. And this is where everything's like controlled. Do you know how many startups like that now are these amazing companies that happened because of recessions? where people got, they lost their jobs yeah, and they were brilliant, but they were, you know, like this, they were comfortable or whatever. They lost it. So like, all right, I'm going to start a company. I'm, I'm already fired. Let me just take this big risk. It's crazy to think yeah. that, it, the, and the whole idea of the paradox is that, you know, something negative or worse happening to you would actually be better. Yeah. That's the, the, the that's life, man. That, it which, that, that It's crazy to think that you, if you were in that position that you technically should be wishing or praying for, yeah something traumatic or bad to happen to you to so, kind of oh, that sh- didn't wake you up how about this yeah yeah, yeah no. and i mean many times i think that those things happen and we and then we instead of u- using that as a sign or motivation to move you in the right direction we take the the victim role hey like, this I, sucks I, for me or poor me my, versus my, like oh my, this is a sign i need to move my ass total, i mean my severe gut health issues that i had in my early 30s that literally were terrible they were terrible it was a year of hell uh, if I, that never happened to me and in, you know, when it's happening, that's the, that's the thing. When it, you're in the middle of it, you don't think, oh, this is good for me. You think this sucks. Yeah. This is terrible. But if that never happened to me, I would have never pursued wellness and health the way that I, that I did after I was a meathead up until that point, I would have never moved in the direction of the voice that you hear now on the podcast. Had mm-hmm. I not gone through that health crisis. Yeah. You wouldn't have started eating organic food. <laughs> no, right. well, I bring that because you guys see that video uh, from Whole that, Foods talking about Whole Foods. Yeah, it was like on what is this ABC? It was like some piece that they were talking about. Um, actually, their brand it was like three sixty five organic. Yeah. I think is their yeah, brand. Yeah, yeah. So the, like, a lot of the um, the frozen the frozen vegetables that they get are directly from China, which is not regulated specifically. And it says the organic? same guys of of oh, how yeah. they regulate organic foods here. Uh, and so people were like, wow, I didn't know that. it was very sneaky. Cause you look on the back of the label and you could see, you know, um, direct from China or like process in China or made in China. And, and people started to be like, so what I, is this? I didn't know that that was whole foods. So I, I read about this. I don't know any specific brands because, so you guys know this, we've been doing this long enough. The organic market was so small 
when I was uh, back in the day when I was training that in order to find organic food, you had to go to an organic grocery store and Whole Foods was the only place. Yeah. You couldn't find organic foods at Safeway, Lucky, Albertsons, anywhere else. Now they have whole sections and it's a huge market. Costco didn't have organic food. And then it totally exploded. And the market demand was so high that American organic producers couldn't meet demand. So they import the hell out of these foods. And you're right. When when it's coming from a country like China, these they don't- have the same regulations. No, not at well, all. Well, and it's also opened the door because it's so competitive now for all these like shady, shady gray areas. Like you ever see like you got to be careful with grass fed beef even that it's grass finished grass fed oh, grass yeah. finished the very end they can categorize because, it that way yeah they yeah. can categorize it as grass fed beef if they fed it most it's live beef but yeah for the last two or whatever I think it is the last two weeks or a month or whatever that they fatten them up like In crazy fact, by pumping them full of grains I, and stuff Doug maybe look this up I think grass fed technically means that they only have to be fed grass for like. It's a like certain, a small, yeah. yeah. It's not even a couple weeks or something. Yeah, it's yeah. not even like half their life. It was something like, or or maybe half their life. It was something small, and then after that, they feed them. Green and remember, when you're sneaky. in these these for profit businesses, that they're they're going to skate the lines as closely as possible. Just like I always talk about the twenty percent room for error on labels. It's like if you are naive to think that you're a weight loss type of food, right? Like you advertise go 20 under. you yeah, you t advertise low calorie, high protein, yeah. you're not going to lie by 20% because you're technically not quote unquote lying because mm -hmm. that's part of how they, they they allow that room for air. So it's like they're going to skirt those lines. What's to say, Doug? Yeah, so cattle that were started on a grass diet but have either received supplemental grain feed or are finished on a fully grain-based diet are considered grass-fed. Okay. Uh, I'm not seeing it. But exact what constitutes grass-fed? Yeah, that's what I got basically. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay. trying to find the details here. Interesting. Speaking of weird stuff, uh, what do you guys think of that video of Paul Pelosi? Okay, <gasps> so here's oh, <laughs> going back on this before we get into yeah. that. Grass-fed standard is built on two key criteria, namely a minimum of 90% of an animal's diet during their lifetime on a fresh weight basis whatever that means, must be grass or grass-based forages. Okay, better than I thought. Anyway, Paul Pelosi. Okay, so this whole thing happens, right? I'm even more confused. Some guy- Super confused. Some guy it. attacked him with a hammer uh, in his house. Wait, wait, wait lay, out, lay out the beginning, Sal, for me. Like how, like the, when it yeah, hit- How did they portray this initially? Like, so yeah, he calls, he he called Capitol Police, but the regular cops show up. And the story was that he got his, he got attacked by- some crazy person. Did he who run broke in the, into his house? Run in the bathroom and he he called or something like that. Something like that, and okay. he got hit by a hammer and it was attack or whatever. And so then you had like these conspiracy theories where like actually it's his lover, mm -hmm. and you know they're covering something up. And then the you know other side is like, no, this person was attacked. Anyway, they showed the video, the body cam video from the cops. Yeah, and it just made me more confused because. Yeah. They open the door. First of all, Paul Pelosi it's opens like the door. It's like they're frozen together, right? They're just looking at the- cops. And he's like, hold, he's, he looks like he's almost holding guy's hand. And he's got a drink yeah. in the other hand. Like he's got an alcoholic yeah, beverage. He's, he's got no pants on. <laughs> he's yeah. Still had ice in yeah, his he, cup. Just like- He's like, got a button-up shirt with no pants and um, barefoot. And a mixed drink. And he's holding on to, it looks like a beer or something. Yeah. And then the other hand, he's like- gingerly holding his wrist he's not like gripping he's no. like like hold almost like he's holding his hand but he's holding his wrist yeah. and that dude has got a hammer in his other hand and when he answers the door to the cops he, he says, says hey, like what's hey what's up hey hey guys oh. and then then there's this weird awkward moment of nothing happening and then all of a sudden the dude with the hammer starts swinging oh, he, at paul pelosi he went the, for it no doubt now there's video of the guy breaking into his house with the hammer so he did break in it's just, it's just a weird, it was weird. Like, like, you know, you open the door that way. Plus he wanted Capitol police. He didn't want the regular police. So there's like all this. And it, it just seemed like they're waiting for the police to show up to then all of a sudden, now we're going to do the drama. That, what is that? Like what? Like it's, I was so, again, like it, to me, it's just like so many questions <laughs> that it's hard for me to just take it as just, oh, this guy broke yeah, in. So and part of me is like, maybe he was like, trying to keep the guy calm. So he's like, let me just go see who's at the door. You know, let me just see what's happening. Yeah. Right. So maybe that, I don't know though, if a dude broke in my just house with a hammer. Just don't hit me yet. Yeah. Yes. If a guy broke into my house with a hammer though, I don't know if I'd answer the door to the cops. Like, I'd be like, help me. You know, I'd run out or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, you're here. Huh? Yeah. But I don't know. Something. It's it, kind of it, feel, it feels totally staged, but what I can't wrap my brain around is why. Oh yeah, I have like no idea. what is the desired outcome of staging something like that? I don't think it was staged. I think it was, I think there's more to the story though.
Obviously, there's but, more yeah. to this story. I mean, you have. Why is he holding a drink? Well, it feels like they are. Yeah, what's they crazy some is how this will get between the two of them. Whatever that was. What's crazy is how this will get brushed under the rug as like no big deal, and it will be no one will be talking about it in a week, right? And I just think it's like that. There's something here that is very obvious if you watch that video. Like this, that that is not. <laughs> there's nothing normal about yeah. that situation. And to just be like, oh, he was like a, a random attacker, and that's what happened, and then like, he's now, you know, doing thirty days in jail or like that, and then we just it, we're we're on going about our business is just, I don't know. Uh, I know. I watched the video like ten times. I'm like, why yeah. is he holding a drink? Why is he holding his wrist that way? Why is he smiling? Yeah, why, Katrina yeah, didn't want to smiling? watch it. And I made her watch it. I was like, you have to watch this and, and try and explain to me what you see here. She's like, what the? F this is weird. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yes, right. Like, yeah. I don't get it, dude. I, I told to, you, I can't figure this out right now. Oh, yeah. you know that uh, like those videos on YouTube, the Aussie man commentaries. Yes, I want him to do like yes. a commentary on it. That would be yeah. fantastic. What are those? What is he? What do you say? That about? Aussie man. He, he like he, he. There's videos playing, and then he he speaks with a real strong Australian oh there's actor. a that's the guy there's a guy who it's does hilarious the, every once in a while i see those go viral where they're dubbing over like the um a lot of times they do it with um like senators and stuff like that is yeah. that who you're talking about no. oh no no that's bad lip reading but i love those two. oh that's yeah. what oh yeah that's my favorite i those, like those are great dude. those are good so like yeah. I, I, I like you have to really to be able to it looks like that's yeah what it looks saying. like that's what they're saying like i, I wonder how i, I how, wonder how long it takes because like he, that's right like he, he probably like yeah, he watches it without the sound and all that, and he's just probably looking at it and like just probably writing notes of like it kind of looks like he said turkey or whatever. Yeah, you do know? you do you think that person has like a lip reading skill going into that, and that's why he can do that? Because that would think about what the skill would take to do that to actually script something without spending Where do hours. Where learn that skill? I don't know. Lip reading? <laughs> yeah. Maybe he's maybe he's deaf. Oh yeah, that's you true. Know? That's true. That would actually be interesting to look into that because that you have to have a skill to be able to listen to it silently and then come up with it's a funny a weird kid. That's very observant. You know, he's just looking that's at people's really ticks absurd. and everything. It's, I like, agree with Justin. Yeah. Oh, you I, don't I, think it, I think he's weird I, and, I, yeah, yeah. and creative. Yeah. I don't think it's, I've known kids like that. Oh no. I bet he's got a lip. You've known kids like that. Yeah. They'll just like, dude, this was a pastime <laughs> of mine. Like we would sit on a bench and we would like portray, uh, you know, characters for these people that walk by and we would like make up stories for them and like, you dude, know, voice over oh them. Let me tell you something. We, we do, do that all the time. I do that, dude. Hey, let me tell you yeah. something. When Katrina and I it's, first it's were the dating, best. so she's, a, she loves people watching, right? So she's, a, she's That's like, my favorite. So do I. I think, well, I think it's part of the gym, right? When you work in the gym, like that was one of my favorite oh, parts. By the was, way, gym man, like companies figured this out. They used to make the cardio face, the TVs, Yeah. new gyms, the cardio faces, the weight room because people prefer to watch people yeah. instead of the TV. It's while way more entertaining. Yeah. So what Katrina and I would always do this. We did this for years when we first started dating and we, when we be out, be out on dates and stuff like that and we'd see another couple and we would pretend to have their conversation yeah, yeah. so she would take on the role of the chick i take on the role of the guy and, I, and we would be watching them in the corner of her eyes but then they've been, been trying to act have out you, with herself have you guys ever done this this has happened to jessica and i like watching tv shows and i and it might even happen in public once have you guys ever had an argument with your significant other by proxy like in other words, what do you mean? You're watching a TV show and the couple is oh, getting they're arguing argument. on something that's kind of oh, and then of course, close to home. and then you take the guy's side and then she takes the girl and then you end up getting a fight <laughs> over the TV show. I hate that so yeah. bad. That happened to she's us. She's not paying attention to Linda. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. she's acting crazy. Maybe she's just acting crazy all the time. Whoa, well, that, you, know, you know, he's not paying attention. We just go back and forth. And it happened a couple times, and at the end, I was like. This is so stupid. We're arguing over TV. Yeah, we're, that's what you think? we're fighting over a reality show. <laughs> it's like when you get in a fight because of some dream, you know, your uh, wife has the uh, night before. Oh, <laughs> it's like, that I there. You know, Katrina is notorious for that one. I'm gonna. She gets with, mad at you for oh, your dreams because she has she has very like vivid dreams. And I mean, I told you she has like the dream book, and they all mean some of the. Yeah. So there'll be times she wakes up and she's just like in a bad mood with me, and I'm just like, what is wrong with you? She's like, I had. How a bad, could you do a, that? Yeah, it's true, and she'll give me this like I had a I had a you know I had a bad dream about you, and like giving me like this dirty look, like I, like I did something. I'm like, wait a second, Dude. you're gonna be mad at me because of your crazy ass dream? <laughs> like, how's that work? It's you did it in my yeah, dream. Yeah, yeah, I know. Speaking of dreaming, uh, the gold juice from Organifi, I just started using that again before bed. So Fantastic. relaxing. It does help with sleep. It really does. Very, very relaxing. Now you do that like in a, uh, like warm it up. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. That's yes. The move. Macadamia yeah. nut milk. Okay. Yeah. And I have one of those, what are those things called? Those little Swifter or Swift, Sifter? Sifter. Frother. You guys Frother. 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 <laughs> Frother. Swifter. Swifter is what you do your floors. <laughs> no, he's seen a Swifter. <laughs> yeah, Swifter. You know Swifter. what though? <laughs> I, that sounds like it should be a Swifter. I know. Somebody was like, Yes. I'm going to start a company. A Swifter. Yeah. 
It's a brand. I, it's hey, honey, can, you, can you swift my drink real quick? <laughs> Make sure it's all swifted. Real good. It's but out. no, macadamia nut, nut milk, warm, about an hour before bed. Oh, Do you so know good. what their top products are sold? Well, Have they, they're you, green juice. That, I know that's one of them. Yeah. I know that's one of the... Now, they've, is that because they've just had it the longest? No. I would it's, speculate. Yeah. It's got the most It's got to be gold. It's probably like green gold. I, I would think pure is on the move, dude, because that's... I mean, that's one I've been like promoting. Well, like I remember crazy. when we first like started working with them, like, and, and we used to talk about the green juice all the time because my entire fitness career, uh, I knew I under ate vegetables, and so I, I was wise enough to attempt to do green juices, and they always tasted like yeah, grass. Like grass. Yeah, yeah, and I, like remember, I, remember, I, remember, I remember like literally drinking these green juices and being like, fucking the terrible vegetables are better. Like, I'll just eat the stupid ass <laughs> vegetables because I didn't like vegetables, they right? They had those like sprout thing. It's like yes. you're literally just eating a hedge. They were, a it was bush. terrible. And then when we got introduced to Organifi, they were honestly the first green juice actually that, that actually tasted good. Yeah. I was like, not, not bad. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh the stuff that they would make you eat, not Organifi, but like the green stuff, like the sprouts and stuff. Like when I would eat that, I just think to myself, like, this is what people would eat. Yeah. When they can't find food. What am I, a cow? Yeah, like, like <laughs> if you're starving, this is what you would eat because there's no food. Yeah. Otherwise, why would you eat this? What's that? What is that? That They used to do this at smoothie bars where they would juice something for you and it's a dark green. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Wheatgrass. <clears throat> Disgusting. Wheatgrass. Yeah. Yeah. What? Nasty. Terrible. Algae. But the chlorophyll apparently in it is supposed to be really good for you because it mimics or it looks like red blood cells. That's the selling point. I never got benefit. Is the chlorophyll it. the stuff that you had me taking way back in you know, COVID days? And that no, was that chlorophyll. No, that's chlorine. No, no, no. no. What was the thing? Those droppers, <laughs> those illegal droppers you gave me. Yeah. The, Wait, well, hold on. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it wasn't for one. It wasn't. No. It was uh, chlorine dioxide. It was chlorine dioxide. Told you chlorine. Yeah. Oh, Not I thought I said chlorophyll. I, said chlorophyll. Yeah. I don't remember. Yeah. No, it's chlorophyll's green. But you don't dare say that because you'll get. A, I'll get a lot of heat now. No, no, I just that's not anymore. Pass that no, I, you know you're, what? Let's you're let, let me see right here. Don't go anywhere. But chlorophyll, by the way, you know, if you have heavy metals, that's good. For uh, getting those out of your body, that's just. I ran. I ran yeah. a. Uh, I ran a, a poll because I have the Mind Pump Media thing today, and I was just interested. Were you get the Mind Pump Media page, a little bit? Shadow Man too. No, right? no. I just okay. So I was just curious. Like uh, I asked about how many people got the vaccine. This is what what I brought up the other day about now that all a lot of stuff is coming out. Um, you know, I was, I'm, I was vo voicing my frustration with my friends and family that like, yeah. haven't like come forward and like apologize or even admitted like, oh, I kind of regret it or whatever. Right. And so I was like, you know what? Okay. That's my own personal experience. And maybe that's just a few people in my life. I wonder if that's the, uh, you know, the, the, the average person who pays attention or listens to us or what that. So I did a poll on there. They're just saying like, how many people got the, the vaccine? Uh, how many got it? Didn't get it, regret it and don't regret it. And the, the number that I was most uh, interested in was the how many people got it and then if, if they regretted it or not regretted it. And 24% of the people that took the poll uh, in our audience got it. And of the 24%, 26% of those people regret it. Wow, so, a full quarter. Yeah, yeah. And wow. only only 6% admitted that they didn't regret it. So that was a very, very wow. small percentage of people who got it that follow us. Obviously, this is interesting. a bit of a You know what I'm bias, seeing now? And I don't know. This is what I hate about <laughs> politics is that the uh, politics, politicians, political parties use the media very effectively. So I don't know what to believe half the time. So you know what I'm noticing now? Yep. I'm noticing all these articles from right-wing, right, propaganda you know, um, I guess outlets that every day they'll post a new young person that died randomly oh, every day. Yeah, yeah. So-and-so 24 year old died suddenly. So-and-so 36 year old died. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, young people die all the time. Are they doing this to can, to make people? Of to course push they are. A particular the, way? Of course the they same are. Same method. That's of, why they're just as guilty. Skewed numbers from when we were in, you know, the because yeah, dude. That's the thing. It's like you you want like this emotional response, and so to drum that up, yeah. sometimes you gotta. One of so, the one of the best things that ever happened to the radical right or Fox News is when the crazy left comes out with some bullshit because then they can counter it. Now they have, and then they play right. Of course they play right. I have that. so I, this, this terrible. Is a, I have man. family members. Members, right that are that, you got to be able to see that too. this is okay so i love so i don't love this well maybe i do because i'm kind of an asshole this way but <laughs> i you know i have family members that are like super conservative right and i mean super to the point where they they love the propaganda side of it and they'll share stuff like that all the time like oh my god another kid died 
you know, 17, another person died. What's going on? I'm like, there's a 300 million people in America. Like, this yeah. happens every day. Are you sure that you're not, they're not manipulating yeah, you? Just like, wait till we no, see the, the other side autopsy. manipulates, not this side. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah, that's, that's how you know you're getting manipulated. 100%. Yeah. Meanwhile, they're all having lunch together afterwards. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hey, so you guys want to hear a stupid study? I love, I love studies that are <laughs> as long as it's really stupid. It's yeah. just, it's just. Sometimes I look at studies and I'm like, really, did you really fund this? Okay, so there was a study. I feel that way about most studies, just so you know. There was a study. <laughs> Adam's like, what are studies? Are they yeah. real? <laughs> dinosaurs aren't real. <laughs> hey, hey, I don't. You know, hey, I just, Adam, do you think dinosaurs were real? Yeah, no, I don't. Actually, there are a bunch of bones that were that they put. Have you ever, have you ever seen the thing? You know, Jason, just J Jason, Justin put me down the rabbit hole because I heard him oh, make no. a comment. Wait, are you really? Hey, you didn't put this on me. Yeah, he made a comment about something, and I'm like. I have never searched this before. <laughs> I have never taken. Where are you a, going with uh, this? That if how you can arrange dinosaur bones to create like like actual animal like other animals, and oh, uh, yeah. yeah, and so there's this there's obviously conspiracy theorists that are oh, like, no. you know, all he did was take a mixture of a bear and a this and that, <laughs> and then you put this bone no. from that, and you, you you put them all together, and then no, you get this bro, like a triceratops femur yeah. wouldn't fit on any other <laughs> no, animal. Yeah, possible. <laughs> Adam, I do not believe that. By the way, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, yeah. I know before you get a bunch. Of, all right, so here, so <clears throat> dumb study. Okay, so they did a study, and they said, you know, what can, what can people do to prevent themselves from cheating? So people who have a tendency to want to stray, like what's an what's an effective thing they can do? And so they the study concluded that if they put their themselves in the other person's shoes, they were less likely to cheat. Stupid. <laughs> stupid. I'm like, what? what a stupid, stupid conclusion. That's conclusion? Yeah. Imagine if you got cheated on. Oh, I wouldn't like that. <laughs> Mark that down. <laughs> I think we found the secret, everybody. Oh, this was a study. Mm. Love them. The wow. dumb study. Hey, who do you have really? for a shout out? Oh, I got, I got a YouTube page this time. So this was shared to me by Rob, who uh, you know who works, works for us. It's a YouTube page for kids. So he has a little, he has a two-year-old. And he says, um, oh, okay. you got to check out this YouTube channel. It's really fun. My, my kid loves it. It's Songs for Littles. Uh, it's, a, it's a YouTube channel for little kids. He, he said it's really great. I watched it for two seconds. Looks cool, but I haven't really looked at the whole thing. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to caution with that because and Katrina's the one who's, who's stricter about this than I am, is uh, like we don't really allow Max on YouTube because how easily they can... Because of the ads and everything, like ads and places. how they can they can real quickly they can be watching a child's children thing and because it's connected to a dinosaur that's connected to Jurassic Park the movie which is then connected to an actor that's in there is now connected and then before you know it you get this adult content that they're looking Bro, at. Bro, that happened to my daughter. I, she was on YouTube when she was little, and I went I was looking at what she was watching and it was spy it was superhero stuff so S Spider Man Superman Wonder Woman and they were tying oh. up Wonder Woman. This Almost like problem. BDSM. Yes. They were tying her up and doing stuff to her. And I'm like, what the hell? Turn that off. I'm like, that was great. That was like purpose. Do you remember too. that? Yeah. The, the Spider-Man guy. Like, yeah. The, yeah. They filmed it specifically to get in that category. Fuck. Yeah. No, I, I mean, up. I'm, I'm super, Katrina's got me all paranoid about him now. And like, I saw yeah. the, th there's shenanigans they need to clean up. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. Of all the platforms, it's actually the one that I'm most weary about with him being yeah. on because of how quickly you can go down the rabbit Plus, hole. Plus I also read, and they're trying to figure out how to fix this in the comments of videos. <laughs> Yeah. There are people that will post links and places to search for, you know, like not good stuff. Yeah. Like they'll put like code words and there's a link. So, so like people looking for like, you know, underage sexual content or whatever will go to a video, look in the comments. That's where they find the stuff. So there's big inv investigation going on about that. Wow, I know. Dude. Kill them all. So maybe we'll not recommend that. Hey, check this out. Did you know that there's natural products that can help enhance your sexual performance? Backed by science, it's true. You can go the prescription route, but there's side effects, or you can go natural and actually feel the results. There's a company called Joy Mode that uses only science-backed ingredients with science-backed dosages. Try it out. It actually works. Go to usejoymode.com forward slash mind pump or use the code mind pump at checkout for 20% off your first order. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Pam from California. Hey, Pam, how can we help you? Hey, guys. Well, first, I want to thank you for having me on. And um, it's really great to listen to a podcast that's informative and entertaining. Thank you. So, thank you. Um, I am asking about hormones for perimenopausal women. I'm just going to read my question. Um, I'm wondering if you have any answers regarding perimenopausal women 
getting estrogen replacement therapy and how it affects you in regards to weight, muscle mass, and body fat. Great question. Look, can I ask you what your symptoms were uh, and why you went on um, estrogen? Like how I did not go on estrogen. Okay. I don't want to go on estrogen. So a little context. Um, I'm, I'm 46. I have been a lifelong cardio girl until about last June. And um, since then, I have gained about 10 pounds, some of it intentionally, some of it not. And uh, granted, I probably needed to gain some of that weight. Um, I started with night sweats a few months ago. And a few years ago, I started having a lot of issues with sleep. Okay. So my concern is weight gain. Okay. I'm not going to lie. I am a fitness fanatic and I want to stay lean. I want to stay fit. And, um, okay. Great question. So Pam, you mind if I ask you some more, some more questions? Yeah. Okay. Um, have, do you have a history of any dysfunctional eating or a, yes, let's say unhealthy? I, okay. When I was in college, so I was like 20, 25 years old, but as you know, those thoughts don't totally go away. Yeah. Yeah. They you never know? do. They never do. I, I, I can totally relate to that. Cause uh, you know, I struggled with my own body image issues yeah. and they'll still rear their, it's, it'll still rear its head uh, when yes. I'm under stress or I feel like life's a little out of control. Um, yes. You said you gained 10 pounds and you, you kind of made the comment that you feel like, well, you probably should have gained or you needed to gain that 10 pounds. Last April, I was about a buck 12. Okay. And which was way too, I'm five, seven, way too skinny for me. I know that. So I intentionally increased my calories from about probably 2000 calories to around 2300. By the summer, I was around 116. I was happy with that. And then I started, I got your book. I started one of your programs June 1st, I ran that. Then I decided I tried KB4A. I like that. So then I did anabolic and I gained the rest of the weight pretty much from when I started anabolic until <clears throat> now. Okay. And you're, you're five, seven. So that's, that puts you at what? 122. Yeah. Okay. Um, how would you feel about intentionally trying to put on more body weight and body fat? Well, I've, I backed off going on the scale so much. I had a, I had a DEXA done in November because I was freaking out about it. Um, and my body fat at that time was around 14 and a half percent. Yeah. Okay. So, so I've, so I've been doing this a long time. Okay. And just based yeah. on the way that you're answering my questions and some of the information that you're giving me, mm -hmm. um, I'm going to say that in, in, the, in the, you've had some kind of issues with body image in the past. Yeah. I think a lot of what you may be feeling is due to the fact that you probably need to put on more weight and more body fat. Mm -hmm. um, the female body in particular is quite sensitive to being too lean or too high under stress, uh, physical mm -hmm. stress. So if you exercise a lot, you're not necessarily feeding yourself enough, um, then you'll start to exhibit symptoms of low estrogen, or you may have low estrogen, or you'll have an imbalance of estrogen and progesterone. And you'll notice things like low libido, irritability, Sleep disturbances, hair, skin, and nails will seem like they're not as healthy. Obviously, See, go ahead. I'm sorry. The thing is, is I've always been skinny. Like, I've never had a problem with my weight. But I, when I started your programs, I intentionally, like, cut out a lot of cardio. So, because I needed to be, I wanted to do your programs yeah. and gain some strength and gain some muscle. So... I don't, I don't know. <laughs> well, look, if you were my client, um, and by the way, this is going to be, this is not, uh, this will be hard. Okay. It's gonna be hard for you. Yeah. Um, for a couple of reasons. One, because of your, your past that you're, you're afraid of gaining weight. You're not weighing yourself. So that tells me right there that you may be triggered from seeing the scale change oh, yeah. in the direction you don't want to. Mm -hmm. Um, I, you know, I, it, it's going to be tough, but I would say, um, try and move in that direction, try and move in the direction, continue moving in the direction of strength, of eating more calories. Yeah. In particular, you want to give yourself the essential nutrients, fats and proteins, although carbohydrates yeah. are not bad. So I would eat carbs as well. Um, mm -hmm. But really push yourself and move yourself in that direction. Don't weigh yourself on the scale. Your best gauge is going to be your strength in the gym. In fact, do you, you're, you're following some of our programs. Do you have MAPS Powerlift? 
No, actually, um, I'm, I'm finishing aesthetic now, and I was going to do strong. Um, strong is fine, uh, but I think power lift would be even better because the goal that I would want you to focus on okay. is strength. If your strength is moving up, you're going in the right direction. Also, okay. what it'll do is it'll take your focus away from body to performance. Mm -hmm. And that is, in my experience, when I've worked with people in your in your situation, the easiest transition is to go from body to performance. To go from body to ignoring the body to it's like you need to focus on something. Yeah. So if I'm if I can get you to focus on strength and you and all you do is single mindedly, I want to get my bench press, my deadlift, and my squat to go up. And if okay. those are going up, then you're doing the right thing. If they're not going up, then you probably need to eat more. You probably need to bump your calories a little more. So just try to get as strong as you can. Okay. With Maps Powerlift, I'll send that to you. Okay, I'm gonna send that over okay. to. You. I also no, want you. In, I also want you in the forum, Pam, because. I, I am in your forum. Oh, wonderful. I want I, I want updates. I want you to tag me, tag the guys. Okay. Let us know what's going on because you're going to need support this entire time because here's what's going to happen. You're going to get stronger. You're going to do what I'm saying. You're going to say, okay, Sal said eat more, push the strength. Then you may notice clothes may start to feel different. You notice mm -hmm. your legs feel a little different. You're going to want that support along the way. Now, what's going to come along with that is mm -hmm. improvements in mood, improvements in energy, improvements in sleep, all that will start to follow, uh, but strength is going to be the gauge I want you to measure the entire time. So if your strength is going up, you're mm -hmm. moving in the right direction, that'll be the best indicator that you're doing the thing, everything the right way. At the end of that, if you've gained lots of strength and you start to feel good, I doubt you're going to need to go on something like estrogen. You know, uh, body fat can have a significant impact on a woman's hormone levels. Having too little body fat or not, or overtraining, or not feeding yourself enough, or a combination of all three, almost always will cause a hormone imbalance. Almost always. So once you fix those, mm -hmm. then you you may notice that you're like, okay, I, I think I feel a lot better. I, I so, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I just I was gonna make a comment that I, I I actually think that we're the wrong professionals in this in this conversation. Meaning that mm -hmm. I know I know your desired outcome of asking us because you respect our knowledge around weight training mm -hmm. and body composition, and that is our yeah. expertise. But I also think that's the wrong focus for you right now. Like that's yeah. like you you need to do what's best for your body. And the advice that Sal's giving, I think, is excellent advice. Mm -hmm. But the best support I think that you can get is from somebody who's helping you work through all those things that we all I think mm -hmm. I think most people have it. Very few people are willing to admit it. And talk about it. I think the fact that you're open enough to share. Oh that. well, I've I've gotten like I'm like I'm recovered. I mean, that was a long time ago. Um, but those thoughts, they just yeah, they they never they never go away. You what, know, you're what, always one hundred percent, one hundred percent, and that and that to me, this whole thing will be that. It'll be that the mental battle battle. Yeah. It's less about the X's and O's from us as far as like oh, follow this eating and do this training. It's like more of like these things are going to rear its head. I need mm -hmm. to make sure I'm mentally prepared for it. Stay the course. Talking do, through it. Have yeah. support. Do what's healthy place. for my yeah. body, not necessarily what I maybe want or want to see. Yeah. Like, you know, and so um, I, I do like the idea of though being in the forum. I think that we can be a great, a great support. Uh, but absolutely, your your body's probably asking you to put on a, a little bit of weight. And I think after you do that, I think you will start to think, yeah. see and, things move in the right direction. And and and, and focusing on strength is just a great. It's a okay. in your in your case, it's a healthy distraction. It's a healthy direction because yeah. what, what's going to be tough for you is to to change your focus and not have it go on something else because yeah. it's going to want to go there. So if I could take your single minded focus, you said you're a fitness fanatic, so I know you have that. Yeah. If you could take yeah. your single minded focus and make it strength and say, okay, I'm going to follow mass power lift. Let's see what I can do in the big in the three big lifts. Let's see what I can hit in those three big lifts. It'll be a great. It'll, be, it'll give you enough space for you to move in the right direction. And then that space, okay. it, it gives you the space for awareness is what it does. Okay. So I'm giving you all the kind of like, you yeah. know, why we do it. But um, I think that's the right direction. And then, yeah, Adam's absolutely right. Like if, if this is challenging in, in a more mental uh, mm -hmm. aspect, then yeah, you, you're probably going to want to work with someone along the way. Yeah, I understand that. But because what about the effects of estrogen on the woman's body? Because I know men, they their their testosterone tanks and they get testosterone. You know, what about for women? Is that beneficial, or is it or the the risks outweigh the benefits? No. So okay. So that? so okay. I want to disclaimer: we're not doctors, but 
I know that. Yeah. Uh, um, estrogen is extremely important hormone for both men and women mm -hmm. for, for, for health, uh, longevity, strength, muscle gain. So mm -hmm. a man could have testosterone that's through the roof. His estrogen, yeah. his estrogen can be in the floor and you'll have trouble building muscle. So, okay. uh, and for women, estrogen, that's too low. I mean, you feel like garbage. You can't, your body doesn't ap adapt well, but hormone, remember hormones are adaptive to your lifestyle, right? They tend to reflect your lifestyle. Now let's okay. say you do everything right. Let's say you're, you're, you're healthy. You're following everything, right? Your body fat percentage is, is great. You're not too lean. You're feeding yourself. You're getting stronger. Hormones are still a little off. You know, mm -hmm. then you can look into hormone replacement or supplementation. Okay. At that point, what you're looking at is quality of life because yeah. the, the risk versus benefit really falls there. What's the quality of life benefit that I'm going to get? But okay. I, I would bet that if you moved in the right direction with your training nutrition, I would bet that your, your hormone levels would also move in the right direction. Okay. That's, that's very, very likely. Yeah. I okay. see that. But if somebody's okay estrogen is off and they're trying to do everything right and everything and it's still off and they supplement and it brings it up to more optimal levels. Yeah. They're going to react better to exercise. Pamela, are you, are you in our, uh, holistic health forum? The one with Dr. Cabral's team? No, I'm not. Oh yeah. They'll I, go there. I, yeah. I think there, there'd be some, some value of you getting, it's a free forum. Okay. It's on Facebook. Okay. Yeah. It's mind pump, holistic health and okay. Dr. MP, MP. Or, oh, it's MP. Sorry. MP, MP holistic, holistic MP. health. Um, okay. And uh, his team is incredible. They're in there uh, and they do talk a lot about this stuff. And so, you know, as you're going okay. through it, that'll be another really good group to, to add to. Okay. No, I'll, I'll check it out for awesome. sure. All right. Thanks for calling right. in and we'll send you, mass, we'll send you mass power lift. Okay. Thank you so much guys. Thank you, Pam. All right. Thanks. Okay. Bye-bye. I tell you what is uh, uh, going through body image issue stuff was such a gift. Now I can look back and be, because mm -hmm. it's something I can recognize and I right know, away. Yeah, yeah. You can recognize it. You know, when you talk to somebody right away, you know, kind of what's going on and, and people don't know, but they who are watching people, they'll send us their full question. And there's information here that I can see that she didn't say on the podcast, like how she's trying to regulate her mood and irritability and libido and all this other stuff. And then based on how she's talking and what she's saying and her fear of gaining weight. And then of course I can see her on video. Uh, like, I, like, you know, I was, I was, I had a pretty educated guess on kind of what was going on. That's why I asked her those questions and I, I don't make a huge difference, but that doesn't mean she's going to do it. That's the challenging thing is, yeah. is, is and you, now you got to do it and you got to fight that inner voice that says, Oh my God, you're getting fat. Oh no, my God. I'm glad, not, I'm glad you too, you brought up, uh, you know, getting professional to kind of consult with as well in that regard in terms of like, uh, you know, having some kind of, um, another professional voice in there because a lot of this is just conversations that need to be had continuously. Yep. And it's not necessarily like, you know, here's the playbook and then just go do it because, totally. you know, you could just see the resistance immediately to any kind of advice. Um, and, and it's just, that's kind of the, the mental state that she's in. And so to be able to work through that, I think is, would be, the yeah, best. It, it's a quick default for me because I failed a lot of women that I trained that were in this position because yeah. I, I was trying to give them, what I thought was what they wanted, which was the ants like, yeah. oh, you want to stay lean, so we'll do this, yeah, and we'll, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I was I was being the the coach with the answers with macros. You were dealing, and, we were dealing with the smoke, but not the fire. That's right. Yeah. And so I'm very aware of it when I when I see it, and no better than to even even if I do have the answers to their question, I know there's an underlining thing that needs to be addressed that's far more important. Than the questions that they're asking asking me, and so I almost always like just the, hey, I'm not the right guy the, for this. Same this, here. Let me tell you who's same the right, here, right. Adam. The, the only the real success I had in situations where somebody had um, some dysfunctional relationships with with diet and their bodies and that kind of stuff was when I worked concurrently with a therapist. Mm -hmm. I would get a client like this, and I would eventually convince them to work with the therapist. Then the therapist and I would work together. That's when I saw success. But if they didn't have those us two, later on I got a little better because I had worked with so many therapists at that point that I kind of knew what questions to ask and kind of, mm -hmm. you know, I, you know, they, they asked me how do I get lean and how do I get strong and I knew like that's not really what we need to focus on. But if I didn't have that other support there, it was like you see me twice a week. I'm training you. I'm not a professional therapist. Like this isn't going to necessarily work. Now that we covered that, I think it's also important to address that. You know, there's, there tends to be two camps when it comes to taking exogenous hormones like, you know, like estrogen, like either you're like super anti it, you should never do that, or you're like pro default right away to it. And 
the truth is I've seen in both cases. I mean, I've seen someone who gets on estrogen and it's been life changing. It's for in them. the middle. The answer's yeah. in the middle. Yeah. They, I've seen, I've seen it completely change everything for them and, and they do want by, by taking that. And then I've seen other people where that wasn't the answer and there was other no. root causes. So, you know, it, this is not a, as simple as like don't or do. It's like we need to investigate more. There's a lot more uh -huh. potentially going on here. Exogenous hormones are not the answer until they are the answer. Yeah. And then they are the answer. Yeah. yeah. Our next caller is Ryan from Maryland. Ryan, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey, fellas. Uh, all right. So let me just jump in here. Uh, my question has to do with kind of uh, how to prime oneself for your very first bulk. Um, just to give you a quick background, I am 38. Uh, about three years ago, I had this sort of, I guess you can call it like a moment of clarity where I realized uh, I wanted to be a dad at one point. Um, had a couple obstacles in the way. Uh, the first one was I was just super unhealthy. I was about 240 pounds, uh, just not taking care of myself. Um, and I also have a lot of history of heart disease in my family. My dad died when he was in his early 60s. Uh, his dad died when he was 51. So I kind of wanted to try to get that in the, going in the right direction. Um, so for the next like year and a half, I would say, I um, kind of went back and forth between uh, dieting and eating at maintenance. Um, got down to about 180 pounds, uh, but truthfully did it in all the wrong ways, right? I dieted too hard. Um, I was only doing cardio. Um, but about a year and a half ago, I decided to, uh, to start lifting weights, actually, when I first started listening to you all. Um, for about nine months of that, I kind of was on the newbie gain train, as it were. Um, gained about 10 pounds over the course of those nine months. Um, and then it plateaued like I thought it would. Um, and then at that point, especially after, again, listening to you, you all talk about what you do, um, I realized that at one point I was going to have to start eating more, right? Um, and it, but as someone who is like an ex, ex obese person, I guess you could say, uh, it scared the shit out of me. I know you guys have talked with other people that have those same issues. Um, so what I decided to do was, um, so when I, when I first started lifting, I was doing the four days a week. Um, and what I thought I would do is kind of like a prep for my first bulk is I, I thought about, okay, let me, let me kind of lock in everything else, right? I'm going to make sure my sleep is good. I'm going to make sure my diet is good. Um, I switched from lifting from three days a week to, or from four days a week to three days a week, kind of on the, um, the advice of you guys kind of I shifted to just doing compound movements right and I tried to lock in everything I actually backed off of the weight a little bit and I just worked on my um my my movements my mobility stuff like that anyway so and then once I once I did that for a couple of months then I jumped into a bulk and it was very minimal it was like maybe 200 calories 300 calories over what my maintenance was and I noticed that my body absolutely exploded. I had such, like, I was feeling better. Uh, my lifts went uh, not through the roof, but relatively through the roof from what I was experiencing. And I guess my question really boils down to, do you all, do you, have you, is this something that you've ever kind of like run into? Um, is there any science behind the idea of kind of prepping your body about going into a bulk where you kind of eat at maintenance, but you kind of lock in everything else. And you kind of, honestly, I feel like my body was like so pissed off at me for so long saying like, just give us like a little bit more food, a little bit more energy, and we'll put it to good use because even, and I did this bulk for about 12 weeks and I, my body fat went down a percentage, but my weight increased about seven pounds. Wow. And I thought about you, Adam, when you talked a lot about your body recom where your, your weight kind of stayed right around the same point, but your body really changed. And although I only did this for 12 weeks, I was just curious, is this something like you've run into with other clients? Um, is this something that maybe I can do more of going forward? Um, so I just was curious of your thoughts on that. Yes. And yes. Yep. You, you know what happened to you, Ryan, is you, you started lifting weights. You got to a certain point, your metabolism got faster. So you needed more calories. This is what we talk about when we talk about strength training being so effective for fat loss. You got a metabolism boost. What happened is your metabolism met your caloric intake. So you can no longer gain any muscle 
because you were burning what you were eating because you had extra muscle from that nine months of newbie gains. So what you got, what you did is you bumped your calories two to 300. You fueled your, you fed your body the extra that it needed. And it still was a little lower than what you needed because you still went down a percent body fat. So yes, yeah. this is exactly what you can expect. If you do this consistently over time, as you build, you'll get a faster metabolism and you'll require more calories to maintain your physique, which is a great place to be, especially if you've dealt with being overweight in the past, because you're going to eat more, but be leaner than you did when you were heavier, when you were 240 pounds. In a, in a perfect world, you continue down this path of kind of doing the same thing as far as adding a couple hundred calories every time you hit these little plateaus and you look back in a year and you're eating a thousand more calories than what you were a year ago, and you're in better shape. You're leaner, stronger, yep. and you're and you're eating a thousand more calories. That's exactly what will happen if right. uh, if you keep going this direction. And it's a uh, it's a good place to be. And and it's actually more common than you would think, especially for somebody who has put on a lot of weight. Uh, this is what they tend to do is they they are afraid to add too many calories. So they always lean on this, the other side, right? It's the opposite of other people, right? It's like, you guys know like, oh God, I, I've been there before. I don't want to go back. And so if I'm going to increase calories, I'm going to do a little bit. And they just want to do a little, they're, they're too worried about slapping on four or 500 calories, but your body's been screaming at you to give it to you. Give it to me. I need those calories. I'm trying to build. You're doing all the right things as far as your training. And so it's actually a really good place, dude. You're you're doing really well right now. Yeah. The only and I guess my go ahead. Oh, one thing, let me add, Ryan. The only caveat is don't get stuck in the same workout routine because that'll also get you to plateau. So make yeah. sure that you train smart. Don't overtrain. Be very intelligent about it. But phase your workouts, low reps for a few weeks, higher reps for other weeks, change up some of the other exercises, you know, more volume, less volume. Um, ideally if you want programming, right, you can go from the maps programs, you go from one program to another program to another program. And that's kind of how we design them. Are you following a maps program, by the way? So I'm not, um, I've definitely been thinking about it. Um, uh, and, and obviously you all would know best, but well, I, I feel like symmetry might be a good call for me, especially mm -hmm. since I moved to doing three days a week and I've been doing just the compounds. Sure. Um, I have been messing around style a little bit with what I've been doing when I first started doing the three days a week, I did a five by five and with one minute um, rest in between just as something to kind of shake it up. Uh, lately I've been doing three sets, but I allow myself three minutes in between sets. But even when I'm doing that, I've noticed a couple of spots where, especially if I'm doing like a dumbbell, like overhead press, I've noticed that like my right tricep is like a little weaker. Um, even back stuff when I do, I've noticed when I just start, I, literally just noticed that I could start doing legit pull-ups lately, which is rad. But I also realized that when I'm lifting myself up, uh, my left side is like a little stronger and I have to kind of like edge it to kind of get them even. So I thought symmetry might be a good call for me, but I'd be interested I, to I hear what you're call. Yeah, you're yeah, right. You're, you're on track. It's perfect. It's a perfect program for you right now. We'll send it over to you and stop thinking about it and just do it. I mean, that's, I think, awesome. uh, it does sound like, though, just so the audience knows, you were doing some good things, though. I mean, as far as the way you were phasing things out, changing up your rest periods, yeah, and like obviously, uh, and th that's it's why you're seeing the results you are. So, but it's nice to have something laid out for you. I think you'll enjoy, uh, hopefully, having a couple professionals keep that right. stimulus going. Yeah, yeah. and symmetry is a great decision. Yeah. I think it's great symmetry, and then yeah. I love anabolic, and then performance in that direction. That's great. Um, I do have one more uh, quick question for the three of you, if you sure. have a second. Yeah. Um, so again, as being someone who like wants to be a dad and has been kind of got into this later, later in life. Um, I'm curious of how the three of you see your training. Like if you were to able to look in the future and say, okay, 10 years from now with my training, what am I, what am I still doing? What are you all still doing? And what do you, what could you see completely changing 10 years from now? Cause I would assume from what I know, you all will be in your fifties at that point. Yeah. So I'm curious of like what you all would change. Cause I know that's something I'll eventually bump into. Yeah. Um, God, I, Sal, mm. Sal's a bad person to answer this. He's still, he's still in the phase of being addicted to training. Justin and I are probably more appropriate. <laughs> Uh, I would probably look a lot like I am now. Uh, maybe, actually, I hope that my my actually volume increases a little bit. I'm, I'm pretty yeah. low volume right now. What's beautiful about where you're at, and if you actually think about fast forwarding 10 years from now, 
if you do a good job, he's going to do a lot of power walking. Of, there, <laughs> stupid. <laughs> if you do a good job of being really consistent for the next ten years of lifting and building muscle, you're going to love the, what what you notice. Like it's easy to the, keep. It's it is a lot easier yeah. to keep. I, I I'm getting away with a, a day or two of training. Sometimes those workouts are only twenty minutes long. You can like, almost tell he works out. No, that's pretty crazy. <laughs> Stop, <dude. laughs> and so. <laughs> So a lot of a lot of my training right now is, uh, you know, I, I prior, prioritize some of the big lifts because I know I'm doing so little right now, to, so I don't lose a lot. Now I I recognize that uh, I looked better, you know, four or five years ago, but my volume was incredibly higher. Um, I still do like mobility stuff, um, although I have to I don't have to do as much of it because I put so much good work in in the last couple of years. So yeah, volume of training just a, a yeah. lot lower and. That yeah, I think selfishly we created Maps 15 uh, based on the fact of yeah. like our yeah. lifestyle and like how that's shifted and how we've um, really been able to um, schedule that around like it conveniently having a home gym too and all that kind of stuff has changed and really kind of like flipped the dynamic for me for, you know, how I used to train in commercial gyms. But uh, I'm always considering those quote unquote functional lifts. And so I will do the, the main compound lifts to just keep that baseline strength there. But, you know, I, I'm trying to address, you know, some of those things just to keep me mentally stimulated when I work out, keep it fun. Uh, but also I didn't really tell them, but like my, my new focus is really to kind of incorporate a little bit more cardio uh, back in the mix, God forbid. Undercover. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't tell them. Why is it a secret? Because he's like ashamed. Cardio. Yeah. <laughs> They seriously, I, like hanging out with these guys, like I'm, uh, I'm found, eating weed now. We found now. out you were on a treadmill like, last week. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, uh, that's that's my plan. What's that sound uh, outside? Hey, like a hey, Ryan, I'll tell you, I'll tell you something that I actually I haven't shared this on the show, but it's been in my notes to bring it up to talk about that. I think is one of the 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 like biggest epiphanies I've had in my life in the last like five to ten years of lifting. Um, I have gotten much better, and hopefully you see this in in your journey of having a, a even healthier relationship with my uh, nutrition and volume of exercise. Like in the past, even being as a fitness professional, notoriously what I would do is I would be all in and I'd be dieting and training hard and like like very consistent. And then when I'm off, I'm like, ah, fuck it, whatever. I'm having ice cream. I'm doing whatever. That Don't worry. I know how to whip it back into shape. And I had this really back and forth relationship with diet and exercise where I have a, 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 a much better and healthier approach, which is I recognize when my, my volume of training is low and I tighten up and I discipline myself with my food choices. Uh, when those times in my life are, and then when I'm really staying trained and conditioned, yeah. uh, I allow those things that I enjoy in my diet more of the, and what I've noticed is it, it, I don't have these dramatic swings and I never really fall way out of shape. And maybe I'm not as shredded as I was when I was competing, but I tend to keep this really healthy kind of body fat percentage, strength ratio, all that, like by just not going extreme. And I think that's, I think a lot of people can relate to that, that they, they're on or they're off. And I've gotten better about never being completely off, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm also not all the way on all the time either. I have a lot better balance. And I think that that has really changed and it's allowed me not to have to go in these, you know, oh, I got to get a hardcore cut now because I let all this body fat come on. It's because I never really get way out of shape anymore. Here, here's the beauty. You're, you're right now you're figuring out or learning the metabolism boosting, uh, incredible ma metabolism boosting effects of strength training. Here's what you're going to learn 10 years from now is that it's the most, it produces the most permanent results. Now there's no permanent results with exercise, but you know, what Adam's talking about is very true. Like you do this consistently for 10 years. It doesn't take much to keep it. It's pretty, <clears throat> it's pretty remarkable. It's actually pretty awesome. I don't know other form of exercise offers that. So, but I, I think you're going to love map symmetry. I think that's a perfect uh, program for you. Mm -hmm. That's great to hear because as someone, I, I will say over the last year and a half, I've been really consistent, which is great, but I know it's not always going to be like that, especially yeah, if yeah. I start a family, like those sorts of things. So yeah. the well, idea of being able to find that balance is really, really great. Do, do, do I, you have a I, good, just, do you have a good woman or do you have a, are you just, are you single or like you want to be a dad, but do you have the right woman right I, now? Yeah, I, I am single at the moment. I, I thought I landed Step someone one. in the fall, uh, but it didn't, didn't quite work. I actually had a really funny, you guys always talk about people carrying weight at different point places on their body. And one time, not to get too personal on you guys, but me and this woman, we were in bed and I, she said 
she all of a sudden she was like, God damn. And I said, what? And she was like, your legs, if I, if I didn't know, like, she's like, I don't think you're like super lean or anything, but if I just saw you from the waist down, I would think you were like 6% body fat. And I was like, Oh, thank you. But <laughs> unfortunately I carry it in other places that make it. Not, not quite so it's another reason why symmetry might be good for me. But, no, uh, Ryan, yeah, just, You'll, you'll, I'm working. On, I'm working on the dating thing for sure. You'll, you'll enjoy symmetry, and then one to look at too is I, I think that it, for later, I think having or during those times when you're not asking, I think Maps 15 would be a valuable yeah. program to have in your. That's a, that's too, the so. that's the program for parents, hundred yeah, percent. Yeah, I had a so. PR doing that program by the way, so it works. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you guys. And I just wanted to say one last thing is just that as an aspiring dad, some of the the conversations you guys have about being parents and. And constantly learning, I feel like that's such a huge thing when it comes to being a parent. Not a lot of people think about that sort of thing, how you can learn, how you can evolve as a parent and as a partner. It's just pretty amazing. So I really appreciate you guys. Ryan, do you have a social media handle you want to plug Thanks, real brother. quick? And since girls will be watching this, maybe we'll get you some dates. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nah, yeah, I mean, I can throw it out there. It's pretty pretty simple. What's your, yeah, what, what what's is your, it? What's your Instagram? Let's get you some DMs. <laughs> I can't yeah. believe I'm doing it. Uh, so on Instagram, it's Ryan, R-Y-A-N. M as in Michael, and then my last name Pranger, P R E N G E R. So, All right. if you're out there, hit me up. I'm I'm in Maryland, but I I work from home, so I'm uh, I'm flexible and uh, no, long distance things. All right. Awesome, Good you deal, hear man. that, ladies? He's flexible. <laughs> <I hope> he, <laughs> <right>. <laughs> He's got uh, lean got legs, you, buddy. Yeah. lean legs, and flexible. <laughs> I appreciate right. you guys. All Thanks, right. All right, man. Take it easy, man. Thanks. Have a good one. Yeah, I, I, I tell you what, uh, what you said is so true. I, I mean, all joking aside, you look like someone who works out, you know, four days a week, five days a week. <laughs> but that's because of the, 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 the foundation you built. And it's so true, you know, and people are looking for that, right? They're looking for exercise that sticks around, the results that stick yeah. around. Strength training does that. When you do it for a long period of time, you get this like kind of permanent muscle almost. It's not permanent, but it's pretty amazing. I, I'll never stop. I'll never stop doing it for sure, but it'll, it'll be modified based on what my body says. So yeah. I'm sure at some point I'll probably have to use a sled primarily yeah. for everything. Just lower keep body. finding a new angle that keeps it interesting. That's, that's, that's my whole thing. That's my favorite part about getting older that I feel like nobody really communicated to me when I was younger. And I, I get, you know what, if you would have told me that, that would have been motivating for totally. me in my twenties and thirties totally. to know like, Hey bro, you're going to put a lot of hard work in right now, but it's going to be easy as you get older and you're going to look better you, than most of your peers. Do you remember how hard it was to be, over 200 pounds yeah oh dude just pressing there was everything yeah now it's like i could be 200 pounds work out once a week and have 200 pounds of muscle you know? yeah our next caller is amanda from australia hi amanda how can we help you hey guys oh i'm so excited to be here i was so sure i wasn't going fangirl at you but i kind of am so <laughs> thank you for having me on i'm very grateful to be here and just keep up the good work thank you all right thank you <laughs> So uh, I'm just going to jump straight into the question. I'm on the last phase of your MAP, MAPS anabolic program, and I'm struggling with your uh, good morning exercise. Uh, I don't really feel my hamstrings working at all uh, when I'm doing it. And I'm like, I'm loading it up quite heavy. And I've watched your video on YouTube of how to do it correctly. And I've like, I recorded my form and everything looks fine, but I feel nothing. And I am very flexible. Like I train and coach aerial tissue. So I have a lot of active mm -hmm. flexibility. So I don't know if that's impeding or like is doing anything that, that, that is why, or I'm doing it wrong. Yeah. So my wife did uh, aerial yeah. tissues for a while. Uh, she traveled with Cirque. She was at, she worked for Cirque. And so she, she was very flexible when I first met her and doing good mornings and stiff legged deadlifts, even hip hinging properly. Yeah she would like, we'd have to like have her stand on a box because the weights would hit the floor and she wouldn't get a stretch. There's the range of motion. So it's just, that's part of it. Uh, part of it could be your form and technique. But if you're hip hinging, okay, if you're properly hip hinging, if it's not at the lumbar spine, in other words, you're maintaining neutral spine and you're bending at the, at the, at the hips and your butt is kind of coming back and your knees are slightly bent but fixed, your hamstrings are working. They are working. So even though you might not feel them necessarily, they're working. Something you could try as a technique. First off, I want to make sure your form is perfect. If this is going to be, I'm going to say this considering you have good form. Okay. So if your form is good and you want to feel your hamstrings, try this pre-exhaust superset. Try doing leg curls and then go right to good mornings and then see if you feel your hamstrings. 
Nine out of ten times, you'll be able to feel the hamstrings in the good mornings if you pre-exhaust them with a leg curl. Amanda, do you, uh, where do you feel it when you do them? And especially since you're loading it, what, like when you get done with a rep or a set, what, what do you? Where do you feel it? Honestly, I feel it slightly in my glutes, but mostly it's like my back gets it, like my lower back starts getting exhausted from just holding the heavy weight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you, yeah. no, do you notice a difference when you do, are, are you having the same experience like Sal was saying that Jessica had where even when she did like stiff legged deadlifts, have you, do you, have you done any stiff legged deadlifts and do they feel the same yeah, way also? Romanian deadlifts. I, I, when I do them, I do what Jessica does. Like I stand on a bench <laughs> yeah. so I can go even deeper and then I feel it. But if I just do regular ones, it's, it's very hard for me to feel much. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, the key is when you're, when you're doing this, right, you can bend over and the lumbar spine can flex and extend. The hips can also cause flexion and extension. So your spine has to be perfectly rigid. So when you're doing the movement, you want to lead with your chest, stick your butt out, and then as you go down, let the hips kind of travel back a little bit. Mm -hmm. You're probably not going to feel a stretch because you're so flexible, and that's okay. You're still working the hamstrings. But try the pre-exhaust technique that I said. And you mm -hmm. could do leg curls on a physio ball, or leg curls on a machine, then go right to good mornings or right to Romanian deadlifts, and you'll probably feel the hamstrings. Well, just in terms of your back, lower back getting fatigue, have you gone through and like um, braced with a um, with a PVC pipe down your, your spine and, and tried to make sure that your lower back was touching the PVC pipe as you hip hinged at the same time? Only because that is a great tool uh, to be able to kind of teach your body to maintain that that bracing position as especially if you're loading it and and making sure that um, you know you're keeping that rigid back completely no i haven't tried that um I, neither the pre-exhaust one i yeah. i'll try both of them so, and see how it, that so just from it's a actually perspective it, it's actually really what you're experiencing is actually common with somebody who has this great of a range of motion in their hamstrings it's like when you're teaching somebody an exercise to feel it in the muscle, we're going to feel it at the end ranges the most, especially when you're first learning That's how right. to activate and work that. So because you have such a great range of motion in the hamstrings and you're not taking it to the end range, it's really hard to make that. Yeah, because there's no peak contraction at the top. It's not like your hamstrings are fully contracted. That's right. The the main, the, the, the range of motion, the, the part of the range of motion that someone would feel in a good morning is the stretch. Yep. And because you're so flexible, you're just going, yeah. it's all mid for you. Yep. There's no stretch. There's no, there's no squeeze either at the top, but it's working. Now, here's the other thing I want to say to someone, to someone like you, which is rare, someone as flexible as you, I don't even think you should search for the stretch mm -hmm. because it's so deep yeah. that unless you go really, really light and your form is like pristine, perfect, I wouldn't load it very heavy and do that because the odds that you're going to have perfect technique with that kind of range of motion is quite low. So I would go, if you're going to push for the stretch, I would go super light. Otherwise... Let the, let the weights hit the floor, so don't stand on a bench. Get perfect technique and do a pre-exhaust. Leg curls on a physio ball, go straight to the good mornings. Go lighter with the good mornings because you pre-exhausted, and then you'll probably feel the hamstrings. Okay, and even though like the flexibility makes it so I don't get that rain, uh, end of range motion, I still get, I guess, the same benefit as somebody. Yeah, less the, the, ham the hamstrings are still working. They're still functioning in that hip hinge. And you're movement. still taking them through a, a pretty big range of motion yeah. too. So it's not like you're neglecting. Like it's different if you were neglecting a range of motion and it's like this shortened little range of motion, but you're still taking the, the muscle through a great yeah. range of motion. It's just that you happen to be really, really flexible there. I mean, if your form is good and you're getting stronger in the good morning, I wouldn't worry too, too much yeah, about this. About the feel of it. Yeah. yeah. And, and I love the advice of doing like lying leg curls before, so you can feel you, it. But, you'll feel it. But that's the reason why, because lying leg curls, there's tension on the hamstring the entire time, mm -hmm. regardless if you're at the end range or not. And you and get the squeeze there. And, and so that's why you feel that. The reason why you don't very much is because on a good morning at the very top, it's if you're not really contracting that much you don't there's no resistance because of gravity because you're up and then when you go all the way down you're not even close to your in range so it's not yeah. making it feel that stretch feeling so that's why that's why you're feeling the way it is and it's not uncommon for somebody who has flexibility yeah, like the, you and it doesn't necessarily mean something is necessarily wrong though either yeah the pre-exhaust is i think going to be key for you to feel but i mean like when you do like a pancake stretch or whatever you're, you flatten yourself out right you're totally you could bend all the way yeah you're not gonna you're not gonna feel the stretch yeah. In any kind of a hip hinge movement, uh, unless you super modify it, which creating I don't Creating that muscle tension is everything. For yeah. You. So pre exhaust. Do the pre exhaust. If you want to feel your hamstrings, go leg curls and then straight to. 
good mornings or straight to Romanian. So it's a superset, right? So it's like you do 10 leg curls and with the leg curls, squeeze the contraction, focus on getting your heels to your butt, squeeze, 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 do 10 reps there, then go to the hip hinge movement and you'll feel them. Okay, great. Thank you. You got it. I'll definitely try that. You got it. Thanks for calling. Yeah, the, the, uh, you guys, have, I've shown you because uh, when I first started dating Jessica, I, I would send you guys, you can see the flexibility Steer, and the strength. Splits, oh, yes, crazy. Yeah, I mean, because you have to be flexible, but also strong to support yeah. yourself. But, you know, good mornings, remain deadlift. Like, unless you can stretch the hamstrings, you're just going to be, it's going to be hard to feel you know, oh, as yeah. you do it, you know? Anybody that has that kind of like hyper flexibility, it's, yeah. it's, it's a difficult client to train. Uh, <laughs> it, it, a lot of times it's a control thing, like, and yes. to be able to, you know, create that muscular tension like took a lot of time to develop and and but but your guys's points about how her already being in that you know only feeling in the end range her end range is so far that yeah. to, to be able to feel that is you know very challenging so and searching uh, for it wouldn't necessarily be a good idea well no. and, and in a good morning you have to understand that when she stands all the way up her there's nothing there's no there's no like even though that's the fully contracted position from that there's there's gravity's not resisting it anymore yep. so she doesn't and have to be squeezing very much and then yeah. when she goes all the way down that's the other point point but she's so she has such a great range of motion that she's not at the end and stretch it, and it's not even a fully contracted right because your leg is still straight right, right. fully contracted will yeah. be like a curled leg at the top it's the glutes but there's no resistance up there you're not gonna feel anything yep. our next caller is nicole from california hi nicole how can we help you hi guys thanks so much for having me on you got um, it yeah i I'll get right to my question. Um, I don't want to waste your time. So I've been listening to you guys for about eight months after I read Sal's book first. Um, I loved what I read about such a difference in my mindset about like cardio is the only way to lose weight and weight training uh, just seemed so amazing to me. My, my husband was the one who actually encouraged me to do it. And I started my research and found your book first. So the podcast itself, I love just for all the other content you put out. It's really entertaining. And um, anyway, so my question is, uh, I started weight training about eight months ago. I had a program that I bought years ago and I just did it in my own. Well, I have my own little studio here with dumbbells. I'm a stay at home mom. I have my youngest is two years old. So I didn't have access to a gym and I listened to you guys the whole time and it was going pretty well. I tended to hurt my neck often with that program. And I also hurt my Achilles on one, on my right leg. Um, but it was all right. I felt like I was getting stronger at the same time. I was still doing my spin bike that I have and a cardio hit class. Both of them I was doing like two times a week as well as walking. And my goal was to basically after the baby, like tone up. I know that's not really a term you use, but to tighten up my core and to lose like eight pounds. And in the first month, I think I gained a couple pounds, which I felt like that's what you guys always talk about. It's kind of normal. And then after five or so months of doing that, my husband um, kind of talked me into using, he's got a rack and a bench and stuff that he brought from work and he put it in our garage and I bought anabolic. So I'm on week 10 of anabolic and I really like it. I mean, I actually, my neck hasn't gotten hurt since I feel like I'm definitely lifting more and getting stronger. But, um, in the beginning, eight months ago, I took my measurements basically from the waist down and that hasn't changed at all. And I was hoping to lose a, like a dress size, but my arms and back seem to be getting bigger because all my t-shirts in the last couple of weeks are tight, like mid bicep. And if as a woman, like I, that's kind of the opposite goal of what I wanted. I wanted to feel like my clothes were loose and comfortable on me. And I'm just feeling kind of bulky in the upper body. So I want to know if you uh, adjust the programming and not do as much of the upper body movements. That's kind of what my husband suggested, but I wanted to ask you guys what you suggest. Yeah, no, it's not a, it's not a programming issue. Actually, Building muscle is gonna is what's speeding up your metabolism and give you the, the fat burning machinery that you want for sustainable fat loss. But that's gonna be a nutrition situation. So um, do, are you tracking your calories? Do you know how many calories you're consuming? Grams of proteins, fats, carbs, anything like that? I do. So I have um, I have a bit of a like restriction and um, eating disorder past. So I I'm able to use an app and track and see about what I eat. And I know I'm around 2000 calories. It's probably my maintenance. 
and I love protein. So I can eat like 130 grams of protein, no problem. Um, I tended to restrict carbohydrates for quite a few years. So that's usually on the lower end, like 80 to 100 grams of carbohydrates is the highest I can usually get to. And uh, what was your other question? Uh, I mean, uh, you know, you answered it. Yeah, you answered it. So I, I have, I have more questions. I thought I heard you say that you were doing the, 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 the spin stuff and then also like a hit cardio thing. Are you still doing those four days of cardio week in addition to the anabolic? I stopped going to um, the cardio hit class and I have stopped my bike. I just do two mile, like a two mile walk every day. With the baby. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, and that might be part of why we're seeing your, how long have you been not doing those things right now? Um, I stopped doing the bike and the cardio hit probably in the last six weeks. And, five to six weeks. and your body weight hasn't changed, but you feel a little bit tighter in the upper body. Yeah. I think I started like, do you mind if I say how much I weigh or does it no, matter? That's, fine. that's up course. to you. I, I think I started back in June. I was like 142 pounds and I'm like 145, 144. Oh, yeah. you're, you're kicking I, ass. Yeah. You're doing yeah. actually really good. Yeah. yeah. Been, you probably got leaner and built some muscle. C consider, consider when you eliminated uh, all that cardio you were doing, uh, that's a, a tremendous amount of calories that you were burning in the week. When we look at it as a whole, when you do four days like that, and then you add it all up and then you add it over a month. So the fact that you've been able to still eat the same amount of calories and really the weight you have is probably negligible. You're talking probably a little bit of water weight for the most part. Maybe some muscle because yeah. she said she got stronger. Yeah, you've you've you're actually probably doing really good. This is a, a matter of like kind of staying mm. the course. A couple things. I know you said protein's good, which is is one of the common ones where my female clients would miss. Um have you, how's your strength gains from lifting? Are you, uh, and how are you pushing yourself weight wise? One of the challenges I had with clients, I mean, even like Katrina, when we first met that would like tend to gravitate towards, gra you know, cardio type training or circuit or hit type stuff, like getting her to like, think about like, let's get that squat up as heavy yeah. as you can. Like the, the loading process has always been difficult. Right. Yeah, how, how are you with loading the bar? Are you, are you pushing the weight? What's it? Tell me how that, how that looks right now for you. Yeah. So the bar is pretty new to me. Like I said, I started, I think early December and in November. So I, I'm squatting. I, I want to say like, I probably gained at least 20 pounds on my squat. When I was doing the the lower rep range, um, I forget what phase that is, like two or one. One, one. Uh -huh. um, yeah, I love that. And I'm probably like a 30-pound difference from the, that lower rep range than the higher rep range that I'm currently in, I think. Nicole, you're on week 10. You're, yeah, you're, you're I started week 10. You're going in the right direction. You're totally – so fat loss or weight loss from strength training is more of a snowball effect. So it okay. starts off slow, and usually what happens is you see the weight not change much. You see strength go up. You notice changes in your body, but the scale doesn't change much. But then mm -hmm. as the metabolism starts to speed up, which takes a second, then the fat loss starts to happen. You're actually moving in the right direction. Yeah, you are doing good. Yeah, you're, you're totally moving in the right and, direction. And I wouldn't even have you change much right now and just kind of stay the course. And did I hear that correctly? You're, are, you, are you lifting more weight in, in this current phase than you were in phase one? No, oh, I'm, oh, okay. I think my squat at like point. the eight to 12 rep is around only, it's not a lot. It's not impressive. It's like 80 pounds, but I was 110 pounds with the one to four rep range. Yeah. You're, you're okay. You're doing great. Yeah, yeah. And I also think that you have room when you get back to, to the going back around, if you go back in through anabolic or you go to any of our other programs, because phase one, we typically are strength hosts. not all of them, but most of them are that way. Uh, I, I, the conversation you and I'd be having, if we were client, I'd be really trying to motivate you to, to stretch yourself on the, the, the weight, really pushing the weight. I think that you've got probably more strength capacity in there and my, granted you're doing things the right way. So I want you to know that like, obviously loading the bar super heavy when you're just learning it, that's not a, a good idea, but that's where I want to get you. I'm, I, I'm going to be pushing you in that direction where you got, you got more in there. We're going to get stronger. Especially for that leg development, you know, those big compound lifts, those squats and, and deadlifts and, uh, you know, really kind of pressing yourself in that direction will provide that, uh, you know, that development you're looking for. Yeah. And, and so if, if you were my client, what I would do is I would have you stay the course. I would have you slowly reverse diet. So I'd have you slowly increase your calories get you to the point where eating like 2,400, 2,500 calories where you're not really gaining any weight, but you're stronger. And then from there, I would do a cut. And then that's where you would see the big fat loss. And what you're doing is you're setting yourself up for sustainable, lean, you know, sculpted physique. 
versus what you might have experienced in the past where it was really hard to keep it off and it was kind of like, oh my God, if I go off my routine at all, it comes right back on my body. What you're going through right now is the metabolism boosting process. And it can take months. It could take months to do so, especially if you're only a couple years postpartum. You, yeah. you have a two-year-old? I have a two-year-old, yeah. Yeah, you're, you're totally, you're going in the right direction. Yeah, you're doing, you're mm -hmm. doing good, Nicole. You, you need to know that. You're doing good right now. You really are. Don't I, get it, impatient because that's where people screw up. Because yeah. what will happen a lot of times, especially with women, is you know, you're like, you're 10 weeks into it. They start to get impatient. Then they cut their calories like crazy or they throw a bunch of cardio at themselves. And then they end up where they were before. And by, and by the way, like very easily, I could tell you, cut your calories three to five hundred cal uh, three to five hundred calories, add a cardio hour of cardio every single day, and I would give you the initial thing that you want. Like you would see your 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 upper body shrink down a little bit. So yeah. be aware of that, right? Like that's right there. If I if you wanted to go there, but that's not setting yourself up for long term success. Trusting the process is is going to, and it's a it's a slower process. Like Sal said, it's a snowball effect. But I want you to know you're doing a good job. You really are. You're doing a good job and you're heading the right path. And as you start to go around and get go through more of these MAPS programs, just you just keep working on getting stronger. Yeah. Getting stronger, increasing those calories, mm -hmm. and you're going to get to a point where you are eating 2,400, 2,500 calories and not gaining weight. And then when we bring you down to your 2,000 calorie maintenance- Now you're lean yeah. and it's yeah. easy to maintain. Now it reveals itself. Yeah. And, and as far as the routine is concerned, you could do all lower body for the trigger sessions. Are you doing trigger sessions on the, on the days in between? Um, so the trigger session days, I have not been able to squeeze in with the baby, but I, I really want to start doing that. So that's the only thing I haven't been doing. Oh, yeah. that, that'll make a huge Nicole, difference. Nicole, that makes a huge difference. Okay, so here's, like what, here's squats, what- Just body weight squats, that type yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here's what I want you to do. On the days in between, I want you to twice a day, just try twice a day, five, mm -hmm. five to eight minutes of lower body exercises. And the idea isn't to get a crazy workout. The idea is just to go through full range of motion and kind of feel the muscles work a little bit. And what that's going to do, it's like adding a turbocharger to the hard workouts that you do three days a week. Okay. A uh, question to that. I have like a larger lower body. That's kind of what I would like to shrink. So that's not going to increase my size doing that type of thing. No, but you said you were, you wanted to avoid upper body stuff. So I'm, but really you can target whatever you want. You can do core okay. exercise, you can do upper body, but just do like, you know, five to eight minutes, maybe 10 minutes of some exercise, make it moderate intensity at most. You just want to kind of feel the muscles a little bit. That's it. Think recovery. Don't think, don't think workout. Do two a day, one in the morning, one at night, and then watch what happens. It's like, it's literally like adding a turbo to what you're doing. Nicole, if, okay. you, if you tell me, you told me about where your weight is. You just told me that you have a very, you're, you're thicker in the lower half. I've got, yeah. you, I've got you squatting 185 in the next six months or less. That's what I got. If I'm training you, I'm, I've got you squatting 185 for five reps. Like you, I'm pushing you. You're going to have that in you. That's the thing to focus on. Get strong. Don't be and and the beauty of having a thick lower body is there's a lot of there's a lot of muscle in there, which and more muscle speeds the metabolism up. Yeah. So there's advantages of having a stronger, thicker lower body to mm -hmm. the overall fat loss. So and, it, and 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 you know when you get as when you get to the process of cutting down, it looks really good. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm hoping for. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. You're doing right. Hey, Let's get you in the forum too so we can stay in touch with you. Yeah, so for sure. I'm going to have Doug send you access to the private forum and then just, uh, you know, keep keep us posted on your journey. Feel free to share videos of your 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 squatting or exercise like that so we can oh, make, cool. make any critiques on your forum or mm -hmm. let you know, hey, you're doing great. I can a lot of times tell by the way somebody is moving away on how much they are pushing themselves weight-wise and be able to give you advice that way too. So, Get in, get in there and and, uh, and make sure you tag us and, sh and share your journey. Okay, that sounds great. Thanks, guys. So I'll probably just run anabolic again when I'm done, and I'll make sure to include the trigger sessions and push myself yes. a bit more. Yes, love, love that. Thank you guys so much. You got it, Nicole. Right, Nicole. Thank you. That was just a, hey, am I on the right path? Yeah, you know, basically. Bro, she, she, she forgot to mention that she had well-developed legs. I, yeah. I, 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 I smelt on. it, bro. I smell, I swear to God, she looks strong to me. Yeah. Like I yeah. see her and I'm like, that chick is squatting. She's 80. just uncomfortable. She she's, has muscle now. She's That's squatting all. 80 pounds. I'm like, she could, yeah. when she gets to the she, part, when she reverse diets and just stays the course, metabolism is already boosting already. She stopped doing all that cardio and she hasn't really gained any weight. When she gets to the point where she starts to cut, when she's comfortable cutting, She's going to be very happy with yeah. the way she oh, looks yeah. and feels. Very Easily. happy. Hey, check this out. If you want to find out if your hormones are optimized, if you're healthy, if they're within range, go to mphormones.com, fill out an intake form, and talk to a professional.
Today, we're gonna to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of you know, weak points and, and areas that I struggled with developing for a, a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was for me, it was for me for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique. 